네가 날 향해 걸어온다 나를 보며 웃는다 너도 내 입에 끌리는지 눈나 피다 캄캄해 네가 두렁저렁 쳐다볼 때 가까이 가까워진 숲설 때난 미치게 만드는 너인걸 아무도 날못 보게 품에 갇혀고 싶어 regular season of Tank Asia that heated up Asia for the past nine weeks. Finally, the Tank Force that will represent Season 1 will be decided. Out of many teams that went through intense battles in both the regular and Masters League, now only two finalist teams remain for the Grand Final. Team of Resilience, Insidious Gaming vs. Team with no retreat, PvP Super Friends. Week 2. Champion Week 8 Champion Week 9 Champion With a great turnaround at the last moment They advance straight to the Grand Final With 1150 points Insidious Gaming Week 2 Runner Up Week 3 Champion Week 4 Champion Defeated the Runner Up Team of the Open Season Night Eagles 3-1 and also defeated the team with the second highest points, Team Efficiency 3 to 0, to advance to the grand final. PvP Super Friends. Take Asia Season 1 Grand Final held in Singapore. Insidious Gaming vs. PvP Super Friends. PvP Super Friends vs. Insidious Gaming. The inevitable battle to become the hero of the final stage starts now. I'm your host, Pete Doe. And I'm Rikos, and you thank you for the final time for this, actually the first season, for tuning into the final. Yes, indeed, of course. Uh, World of Tanks brought to you by Wargaming and broadcasted by Com TV. You can follow us on YouTube. Here's the address uh, below. That's uh, www.youtube.com slash comptv.net. And uh, yeah, for the occasion, I do believe we have uh, a special gift for our viewers. Yes, that we do indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, lots of gold uh, to uh, be distributed today. So all you got to do, uh, basically, is just go uh, to the following website. Uh, that's uh, wallettanks.asia. Uh, and we have, uh, well, 50 gold, as a matter of fact. Uh, 500, 500, actually. 500 gold, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for each of our viewers. Uh, of course, there's a limit as to how much we can give out as well. So it's a first come, first serve basis. So yes, the bonus code here for you, that's tam 7 Stream. So all you got to do, once again, is go onto that website, set once again, so that's worldoftanks.asia. Well, in any event, uh, well, what a long journey so far. Eh? I know, it's been a long nine weeks we've had so far, and we've seen so many teams progress, and, you know, some teams, you know, just falling just slightly 
slightly, slightly behind, you know, just barely making it, or not barely not making it to this final league, and now I think we just have the best two right now. Well, absolutely, it's just been a, a very close contest uh, throughout those nine weeks. A lot of teams could have been here today, but uh, I think that, in all fairness, we can say that our two finalists uh, today, present today, were the most consistent team. Like, yeah. Uh, well, throughout the season. Yeah, before. most definitely. I mean, Insidious Gaming, he's been here since, you know, the first week, been in the Masters League every single week, and then, you know, PP Super Friends, although they dominated pretty much throughout the first half of the season, they kind of uh, went MIA for the last half. So, I mean, we'll definitely have to see, you know, what they bring today. You know what? That might be a blessing in disguise, man. It could fact, be. Just... And actually, it slightly actually worked out for the Night Eagles as well. We yeah, saw indeed. them in the, in the playoff week. Uh, they actually were the first team to have the first back-to-back -back victory. Throughout yes, that weekend. yes, indeed. So once again, Seas Gaming, uh, I do remind you, just the only team that has been here week in, uh, week out uh, from the very get-go. And of course, they were here uh, as well, like for uh, the open season as well. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, a lot of familiar faces today. In any event, uh, let's take a closer look at uh, our rosters for today. All right, so taking a quick look at the rosters from both these teams, PP Super Friends, the captain being Batman, of course, Ace Suwoodo, Hydra Rex, Anato, Little Mac, Kermana Murte, Robin, Dustin, Ulipong, and Terra Guavain, and finally, Tony Montana to finish off that roster. And Batman, who did bring a costume today. He did, in fact. <laughs> I, I don't know if he's actually going to be wearing it throughout the match, but uh, maybe he can, he can grace us with his uh, with Batman-ness. <laughs> Indeed, and now taking a look at their opponents, of course, Insidious uh, Gaming, who made it straight to the finals, obviously, by topping the Masters League's charts, so uh, yeah, definitely a solid record. Uh, the troops led by Captain Desk, he's quite the charming chap, yes, I, yes. I can say myself. And look at that, all those familiar names, of course, Blackpool, Grits, Elite, Hobbs, uh, Gypsy Danger, Nikolai69, Nisa as well, uh, quite a lovely chair, <laughs> I want to add, and also Sea Chai, Amsterdamsian, and finally Sick Tank. Yeah, it's actually really nice just put, finally, to put a name to the, all these faces. All these faces, yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty exciting to meet all the players as well. All right, now for uh, the latest records, and look at that. I mean, just uh, do I even need to introduce you to these guys? Like, PP Super <laughs> Friends, an absolutely ridiculous, ridiculous record uh, throughout the Masters League. I do uh, remind you, uh, they were the Week 3 and 4 champs, and of course, uh, in the playoffs, defeating the Night Eagles 3-2, uh, sorry, and of course, team efficiency in the round, uh, in the sixth round, 3 to love a clean sheet victory. And another surprising thing is that team efficiency were actually leading the ladder for most of the, most of the first season. Well, it's the only other team that had won just uh, two back-to-back -back titles, as a matter of fact. Next like to PvP and yeah, Insidious. Indeed, yes, indeed. yes, and actually Insidious uh, Gaming, taking a quick look, uh, look at their roster, they've been here every single week. I mean, they've, they're the only team that actually have three championship titles under their belt. And another thing to mention is that actually in their final week, uh, of this first season, oh, that was epic. They actually barely made it to this final. Yeah, that was that was an it epic. Run. It, uh, it honestly could have been efficiency in the city's gaming spot right now. Yeah, it, it, it totally could have been. But Insidious Gaming playing rock solid throughout that uh, ninth and final week of the uh, Masters League, so definitely deserving their spot here today. All right, and now to the map selection. Taking a quick look, of course, PP Super Friends as the finalists here, the guest team, and uh, yes, Insidious Gaming as the home side. Now, interestingly enough, Steps was taken out, but I, I think uh, before we actually started the cash, we kind of you know uh, had a quick conversation with all the players, and I think they just consent. There was just a great consensus to you know Steps was the map that they were going to eliminate. But uh, yeah, moving on to the first set, going to be take place on Ansk, set two on Mine, set three on Himmelstorf, set four on Abbey, set five on Wide Park, set six on Airfield, and finally set seven on Prokhorovka. Yes, indeed. And I do remind of you, as of course, uh, today is the grand final, so uh, we're, we're just tweaking things a wee bit. This is not a best of five set uh, matchup, it's a best of seven, so uh, whoever takes uh, gets to uh, uh, four uh, sets first shall win this title. All right, and now just, uh, well, let's meet the players out there, taking a quick look. And uh, yes, I believe uh, uh, that uh, we're going to start off with uh, PP Super Friends. Uh, there we are, 34 wins for 21 losses. Uh, That's yes. an amazing record. It, it is an amazing record. Uh, yeah, we're talking about like the, the, the set count, of course. Uh, and the actually, losses. Batman's wearing his mask too. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Batman with his mask. Too bad Robin didn't bring like a sort of a costume for himself <laughs> as well. But uh, all in all, PP Super Friends, of course, look at these guys. Uh, definitely their game faces on, except Batman. Hi, Batman. <laughs> How you doing? All right, in any case, uh, yes, of course, uh, there's so much at stake here today. I do uh, remind our viewers uh, there's a 60,000 uh, USD a grand prize for the winner. So uh, needless to say, yes, tension is at the climax maximum. Definitely so. 
All right, and now for their opponents, of course, Insidious uh, Gaming, the local team as a matter of fact, didn't really have to fly in uh, to play this fight on, did they? And actually, uh, PvP uh, Super Friends, actually, most of our members are living in Philippines. In the Philippines, yeah. yes. Except for the captain, like Batman, who hails from Brisbane in Australia. But like, yeah, taking a look at Insidious Gaming, uh, look at that, just pretty relaxed, if you uh, if you ask me, so far. But uh, yeah, once again, a pretty ridiculous record, uh, if you ask me. 57 wins for uh, 38 losses, that's yeah, just that's almost 20 more wins. Than I know. I know, and that alone is quite staggering. Uh, needless to say, of course, this is a team uh, that wins. And, uh, well, obviously, we can't just call them the favorites just because they made it directly to this final. I mean, like, you know, honestly, all the teams that were in the playoffs just could have been here to die. It's just oh, yeah, a, honestly, in terms of level. Honestly, no matter what, like, what two teams we had in this final match, it would have been a great match. Yes, <laughs> or it is going to be a great match. Alrighty, so here we are taking a look at this command center. Yes, indeed. Uh, well, pretty uh, a nice spot like to uh, hold uh, this final, of course. Yeah, uh, definitely. So, I mean, if you're in Singapore and you're not here, I don't know where you are because we're actually in Plaza Singapore right now. So, if you are in Singapore and you haven't made it or if you don't know where it is, yeah, definitely head out right now. Uh, indeed, uh, it's going to be a glorious seven sets. I mean, like, if we go uh, the distance once again, I do remind the viewers, like, yeah, the first set taking place on Ansfall by Mainz, Himmelsdorf, and Abbey, at least we're going to play on those four. But uh, uh, talking about the map selection here a wee bit, uh, can you say that you're surprised? Or? I mean, I'm not too surprised. We did, get a, we did you know, chat a small bit with the players, and, you know, just all of them just pretty much said, Steps is not the map we want to play on. Yes, indeed. Uh, so we're going to have to see how they fare. Well, as a matter of fact, for as an opening setter, like really playing on Ensk, uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword, really, because uh, it's a map that really does not allow any mistakes uh, whatsoever. In any case, we are now ready to roll out. Yes, this is the grand final of the 2013 Tanks Asia Season 1, Insidious Gaming versus PvP Super Friends. Let us go uh, to uh, Ensk. Mines, uh, Ensk, sorry, <laughs> for set number one. Uh, Team of Gaming starting Gaming down Gaming south, versus. as a matter of fact, as a new team, no we've got uh, yes, their Super opponents, uh, PvP uh, Super Friends, starting to the north uh, yeah, as it. the uh, blue side. Yeah, take a quick look at the tank selection real fast. Pretty similar setup so far, both teams going with uh, double uh, Amex 50s, and then the IS-3s versus the 110s. That's actually a, a pretty even uh, matchup right there, because the 110s and the IS-3s, they are very similar tanks. Yes, indeed. Uh, interesting enough, Ice Water here on the PP side, who decided to roll out with the, with the medium T69 as well, so that's going to uh, provide them just with a wee bit more options out there in terms of mobility as well, and flanking maneuvers. The bot opportunities as well. Pretty, really, really standard uh, defensive position coming uh, from the uh, southern team here. And uh, yes, Ice Water just trying to cover uh, that railroad to the middle. Yeah, the rest of the PP forces definitely camping or not, just holding the center of the city right now. And CS Gaming pretty defensive as well. So a lot of tension. You just feel the tension right now. Well, so much at stake once again. And I think it's very small that Ice Water is actually just covering that railroad because, like, you know, since a couple of weeks ago, we had seen like efficiency uh, just executing some massive. Massively successful rushes through the railroad uh, as well from the southern position. So, yes, uh, homework uh, well done here. And uh, we can see Commander Muerte here as well, just uh, to the railroad. Uh, uh, he's probably waiting for an opportunity okay, to so go down south. Batman actually spotted one of those heavy tanks down to that southern part of the city right there. So now PP know at least uh, one of those members of the city escaping are down there. Actually, no, excuse me. Uh, Yes, it's serious gaming. It's serious gaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, right now we can see Nisa yeah, here uh, that has been spotted, but uh -oh. also Nikolai 69. Batman taking a lot of hits here. He might go down. No, he, I think he's going to make it. Uh, yeah, he yeah. should be able to make it right there. Nikolai, I believe, was reloading or is reloading currently. So yeah, Batman barely living right there, but he did provide valuable information for his team. Oh yeah, absolutely, and look at that spread from uh, Insidious Gaming as well, very conventional, but at the same time, really not any loopholes in that defense, can be very, very hard to break through those lines, especially uh, towards the city. Uh, you know, if you ask me, like, yeah, PP's gonna have to come up with something rather special uh, to break uh, that uh, siege. I definitely think that Insidious Gaming know what is up right now. They are expecting a city push coming out from PP, so friends, that's why they're positioned in that fashion. Ace Winter is doing a nice job, he actually landed some nice shots on the Desk Guy, so Desk Guy's taking about two or three shots right there, Ace Wooder really doing a really good job of securing this railway area. Yeah, and it's, once again, it's a, it really is an essential spot. Uh, you can't leave that railway, uh, that railroad unprotected as well if you uh, uh, well, basically want to avoid flanking maneuvers uh, coming from that front.
front. It's pretty much a highway in between those two starting positions as well, so uh, it's quite essential to cover that up to protect your base. And once again, like yeah, because we got into the finals, like even a, even a single T1 can just make such a such a difference as well. So uh, I'm kind of glad that Batman stayed alive in that. Oh, he's gonna go down here. Yeah, he's gonna get the blow. Probably will take him down. Yeah, there there goes. we go. So first blood drawn on. Oh, the feet. he's taking the full stamp right yes, now. Yes, indeed, indeed. Took a Nisa taking a nice hit, about like 300 hit points, like taken out of him. But uh, once again, like yeah, first blood drawn. Actually, uh, they tied us up. Uh, oh yeah, they managed to get the T1 of their own. Indeed. Uh, so Nikolai 69 going down as well. Oh, Ace would actually pushing down the railway right now. Uh, they could be going for a push. Uh, maybe. I think he's just going to try to go for a flanking uh, type of maneuver here. Just trying to get some crack shots at uh, the players who are lurking uh, towards the uh, south uh, eastern edge of the city. And oh, look at that. Just uh, lots of movement coming from PP. As a matter of fact, it's just like uh, heading uh, towards the west here. And uh, I think they're going to go for it, yeah, right? Yeah, they're definitely going for a push right now. They have a scooter towards the railway to back them up and, and have a crossfire situation once they engage in City Escaping. And City Escaping have no idea this is happening at this point, and they're going to, yeah, they have spot each other. Oh, yeah, right now it's just, oh, and the Nisa is probably going to go down. He's taking so much hits there. Oh. He does go down. Uh, brilliantly executed push, and look at that. It's just, uh, they got to spread out, though. I mean, Little Mac has taken a lot of damage. Look at that. He's now down to 450. He's got to get out of here. He should, he should actually stay behind Robin at Exactly, this point. Robin yeah. has to cover up for him, and that's what he does. Little Mac, one more shot's gonna do it here. Can he survive this? Might yeah. be crucial, actually. Like, yeah, Antari has to get in front of him as well. Like, well done, really. Just uh, uh, right now, PvP uh, doing some really nice uh, nice job, like trading damage here. So, oh, all their players as he tries coming from behind. Little Mac's probably gonna go down right here. Can get a shot. Yeah, yeah he, he does them. go down. Oh, and they actually managed to take. They lose two tanks right there. Ace Water also going down. Yes, indeed. Uh, so uh, Ace Water uh, went down alongside Little Max. So it's not looking too good for uh, PP. If you ask me, oh, another no. tank going down. Gauvin, uh before. Oh boy, this is looking pretty grim. If you yeah, ask Rob me, Rob about to go down as well. Uh, indeed, uh, Robin is just in a world of trouble. One more shot's going to take care of him. That's that, that does it pretty much. Yeah. And now Antare uh, left alone, surrounded on all sides. And uh, yes, uh, which means that uh, well, Insidious uh, Gaming is going to take the opening set. Yeah, and honestly, although PvP did a great job in that push, it's just Death Guys honestly held four takes by himself for enough time for his team. Yes, indeed. Uh, it's been uh, a, a job well executed. Solid defense coming from Insidious. They didn't panic. Uh, you know, uh, let us remind you, so they were the first ones to actually lose a tier eight, uh, which could be quite detrimental when you think about it, especially playing on a map like Ants. But they didn't panic. Uh, they still regrouped together. And the thing is, if I just may voice uh, uh, one one point, just uh, of criticism, like when it comes to uh, the uh, PP side, is that uh, all their tanks were just clustered in their push, and they had to spread in order to just get a chance uh, to. Uh, uh, pull this off, but they couldn't uh, just quite do it. As a matter of fact, it was just like all uh, together, just uh, uh, too much concentration on one spot, and uh, ultimately they got flanked. Yeah, and in CDS Gamer, we're expecting that too. So, I mean, once uh, Death Guys got into position, and once he was able to defend four of those tanks, you know, from, from progressing even more forward or even more south, uh, it gave them, uh, it gave in CDS Gaming enough time to come from behind PvP. Well, you know, Nisa was the first one to go down, actually, uh, on the, the uh, uh, pretty much on uh, the uh, in CDS side, and, and the thing is, as soon as he went down, I think that he would have been probably just wiser uh, for PP to back off a wee bit or and just go into that himself. square area. Exactly, mm -hmm. just uh, but at least like stay on the cover or just to uh, try to uh, reposition themselves and especially like just spread out a wee bit more because they had no shooting opportunities and, and they had no just, cover. Exactly, and and ultimately they got encircled and uh, well, pretty much that was GG from that point on. But uh, yes, uh, a pretty rock solid performance I want to say from the Cities Gaming in this opening set. I mean, uh, they definitely were the ones uh, to uh, actually just be attacked. They were quite um, under a lot of pressure, as a matter of fact, of losing Nisa, but uh, they kept that nerve and, uh, yeah, well, pretty much making a statement from the get-go. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, honestly, I just really got to commend, you know, Desk Guys for that play right there. He, he got into oh, the he carried the team. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, he just, he held those four tanks long enough for his team to get that flanking maneuver, and that is the key to how they won. Well, it, and it, once Ace would have gone down, it just, it just really snowballed from there. Well, exactly. Like, time and time again, like uh, we've seen throughout the season, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily just has to do with who gets the 
some more kills, etc. But uh, you know, just being able to hold the fort until just help uh, comes out is actually quite essential. Like holding the position, not going down, staying alive, and that's exactly what they're still doing damage. Exactly, and still inflicting damage on the enemy tanks. So uh, uh, I want to say that uh, it was a pretty good effort, although from PP Super Friends. But yeah, once again, uh, just uh, sort of sloppy. After getting the first kill, they really should have regrouped and reorganized their forces and their formation. They couldn't do that, so uh, kind of unfortunate uh, for them. But uh, I mean, once again, this is a best of seven, right? So uh, they do have plenty of chances to come back into this. Yeah, honestly, if this was a best of five, then I would have you know a lot of uh, worries for PP because if they lose the next set, then you know only one more set would actually mean they lose. So I mean. You know, luckily for them, it is a seven-setter, so they do have plenty of time to come back in this. And you know, we're moving on to uh, Mines next, <laughs> I was gonna say which that is, uh, yeah, PvP is probably one of their favorite maps. Yes, indeed. Well, y you know, we've talked we've talked about this time and time again throughout the season. But okay, yeah, PvP Super Friends with such an outstanding record uh, on, on Mines, especially they just pretty much they blew everybody away. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, just anybody who tried to play them against them on Mines were good cut in half. At least so. while they were dominating. Exactly. Yeah, like during the first half of the Honestly, week first three season. and week four, like nobody had an answer to their spread when they no. started up north and like, you know, you had Batman and Robin just uh, monopolizing either the West Tower or uh, uh, the Eastern Village and nobody had an answer to that. But the thing is, it's just, uh, well, that's what I really like about uh, the format of the season is that uh, basically just because you lose doesn't mean that you're out. And so everybody does that homework on you and then they find the loophole. Uh, it, the same thing happened to efficiency as well on Ansk. Uh, yeah. So ultimately, I'm I'm actually really curious as to what PvP Super Friends is going to bring uh, to the table playing on mine. You know, actually, uh, just before the game started, um, uh, just before the game started, I was actually talking to uh, to Batman, and I was like, "Okay, so you're going to play on mines? I'm going to come up with the same strategy." He's like, "I can't tell you that, Mike." <laughs> so yeah. really, I'm actually uh, really looking forward to uh, what kind of ace in the hole they're going to bring out because yeah. you know they are they tended to be a little too predictable after the, such a great run on this map. Definitely. So and, I mean, they could go for the same strategy where they send Batman and Robin to that Western Island area and they go for those uh, side and flanking maneuvers. However, at the same time, I feel like uh, they can p even go for that same strategy. But maybe if they want to go for that same strategy, they should use maybe T69. Right, with a heavier setup. I was, I was actually going to say that as well because uh, we've had teams like the Immortals or Anubis Empire, for instance, uh, uh, not even caring what's going on to the West Isle and just pushing straight yeah. in the middle yeah. to the Central Hilltop. Up, but uh, with uh, with five heavy tanks, pretty much, and ice trees and whatnot. So, uh, so, and and that's pretty much how all the other teams managed to find this loophole uh, when it came to uh, PP Strat uh, on this particular map. So, uh, I'm kind of hoping that maybe they can come up with something similar. But uh, as you said, with a slightly heavier setup, because yeah. uh, I think 1390s, uh, you know, playing against like five eight tanks, that's uh, that's a bit too much for them to handle. Yeah, definitely. So, one thing that I want to mention about PP though is that they love to spread out and they love to have maps control and that's the key to actually winning these uh, fairly open maps such as mines or, or, or even a uh or uh, say Abbey, Abbey uh, well. where you really vision is the key to success. If you don't have vision, then you won't be able to know where to go or where to uh, to engage the enemy. Well, exactly. Like uh, I think, uh, well, PEP as a whole, especially uh, during their two weeks of sheer dominance uh, throughout the, this uh, first season, have shown us that uh, not necessarily. Uh, well, you know, camping is definitely not rewarded per se within the game itself. But uh, yeah, they, they were the first team. I, I guess like with uh, perhaps the Night Eagles and even before that during the open season, it was Avant Garde. Mm -hmm. uh, but showing us that. Uh, the more vision you get and the, the the better scouting job that you get, the more control you get on the map, and hence the more opportunities you, you do get uh, to uh, sort of like uh, flank your opponents or just get uh, loopholes. So uh, in any event, we're going to have to see if they can bring this up and, uh, well, most importantly, come back into this final. We are now ready to roll out for set number two. Let us go to Mines. All right, so here we are, a PvP Super Friends. Uh, yes, uh, well, they're like down one set here, and they are starting down south this time around, and uh, yeah, uh, taking a look uh, at their tank selection here. Like you said, yeah, probably a, a slightly, slightly, just slightly. Yeah, but they're actually going with pretty much the exact same tanks lineup they went throughout the, the first season. They really like to go with those AMX 13s. And most like, but since they're starting down south this time around, I don't know if they're actually going to go for that Western Isle this time around. They could just possibly go uh, even for the even Eastern Village. Yeah, but both teams early on, yeah, as expected, uh, at least posting a couple of those heavy things towards the center of the field area. Whereas, look at that, Insidious Gaming sending four or three of their heavy tanks to this uh, Western Isle right This here. is an extremely oh, aggressive man. move, and look at that, just Batman taking a, a uh, just a hit, about a hit. Uh, but so is this guy, as a matter of fact, oh, this is a bloodbath from the get-go. 
Yeah, a lot of damage being thrown around there, and actually C Chai getting taken down that T1 as well. So a slight, slight advantage uh, going in favor of PvP actually. But I think that I mean they're still trading damage evenly between the tier eight. You know, this guys did take a lot of hits though. He did. Uh, I mean, he, about like half of his hit points down, and it's going to be uh, very hard for him to just be on the front lines and helping out his teammates. But uh, yeah, just uh, so much more firepower when it comes to uh, the uh, Insidious Gaming side, so they're definitely not down just yet, but they have to be careful because uh, they were like pretty much punished. Close target. Look at that, that desk guy's actually missing a couple of shots there onto the little Mac. We've got the Mac coming slightly working, ahead on that trade, and look at Nisa actually pushing up this hilltop to try and maybe get some sneak shots onto Antair or little Mac. Uh, indeed, uh, he's got to use his T32 uh, to. Uh, Good advantage here. Oh, and they're actually pulling down their T6 knife from the base oh, area as well, too. And Nisa, yeah, taking a. Well, oh, he's actually. His track is broken, here. too. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, both tanks are loading. Oh, and Nisa taking another huge shot. He's got to watch out, though, because uh, there are like three tanks on him. One more shot's going to take care of him. Oh, oh he does no. go down. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's looking pretty bad for Insidious Gaming at this point. They've also taken. Death Guys is taking a lot of damage as indeed, well. Indeed, he's down to 600. And look at that little Mike aiming for yet another shot. She just. Barely misses right now. That would have uh, taken him down to three. Oh, no, one but, shot uh, landed actually from Robin. Yeah, look oh, at Batman and, and Robin unleashing oh, their auto loaders right there. Yeah, Griffs as well taking down to just a little over half health as well. So yeah, both Griffs and Death guys have to be careful at this point. If another T8 goes down right now on the Insidious Gaming, it's game, game over. Yeah, hey, I, I really don't think they can come back. From that. I mean, for, to be honest with you, at this level, even right now, I think it's very hard for them to come back from such a situation. I mean, if, if, you know, where this guy is still at like full health, I wouldn't say, but uh, right now it's, it's it's pretty tall order for them uh, to come back from. And if you just look at the map control as well, coming out from PvP, they have pretty much monopolized not only the uh, the central hilltop, they've also monopolized the bottom part of the island as well. They, I think, believe they were sending a T1 towards the eastern. Uh, Eastern Village area. Well, I mean, obviously, like right now, after uh, losing uh, Nisa, it's just really forced uh, the uh, P the the uh, Insidious uh, members to just uh, sort of regroup. Oh, as a matter of fact, so uh, yeah, they have to uh, give a lot of ground to their opponents, and they're not going to have a choice but just to retreat uh, further and further towards uh, the northern base. And uh, ultimately, they will get surrounded uh, unless they do something right now. But what can they do? I mean, honestly, this guy is so low right now. So in terms of firepower, they're just completely outgunned right now. Yeah, I think they just slight I think Insidious Gaming just slightly underestimated the importance of the hilltop. If you want to go for the east, uh, for the western uh, island area, you have to have at least a couple tanks there to guard the hilltop. That, that is uh, very true. I think that uh, although it was a pretty uh, good just sort of all-in maneuver because they were really expecting like Batman and Robin yeah, to yeah, just monopolize the west. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So they were kind of hoping to take at least uh, one of them down quickly uh, before just regrouping perhaps sort of towards the hilltop. And because they were leading like one set to love, I think it, it was a worthy risk to take. Uh, at this point, so uh, definitely not shooting them down on their strategy uh, or uh, you know just uh, sort of the tactics they have chosen for this particular set, but it's definitely looking pretty grim for them at the moment. Yeah, look at that. Death guy's down to 378 health right there. Probably just two shots, most definitely will take him out at this point. Yeah, Little Max still PP. They're playing extremely safe right now. Usually, I mean. Throughout the first season, we usually saw them, you know, allay all these kind of close around the enemy at this point uh, because they have a two-point event. But this time around, they realize that uh, they don't want to risk anything, and they hey, it, if they lose one, they can just get. You know what? There's like uh, there's too much at stake here. Uh, they have the tier point advantage right now. Of course, I do mind you, that's a plus nine point uh, a tier point advantage. So it's more than enough uh, to actually just win this set, even if the timer like runs out. Uh, but uh, like you said, you know what? Uh, the old PP still probably would have pushed. But uh, you know, with 60 grand uh, uh, at the end of the day, I really think they're just gonna wait and uh, uh, wait for Insidious Gaming to crash upon their defense. And yeah. I think that's very wise. At this point. And eventually, Insidious Gaming is gonna make a move because if they just let this timer run out, they're gonna lose no matter what. Well, exactly. What. So, so they're, gonna have to, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're gonna have to just uh, come out of cover and just to uh, go for that fight and the, the moment they do they're just gonna be completely uh, outgunned so a uh, very wise choice uh, right now uh, coming from uh, uh, PvP and the look at their spread really there's and not any loophole whatsoever every single uh, inch of ground has been covered. Uh, there's like uh, plenty of uh, uh, cover fire possibilities as well, just crossfire uh, angles. So uh, I, I really don't see them losing this fight. Yeah, definitely. So I mean, PP's looking just super strong right now. I really can't see them losing unless they make a, a critical mistake where they, you know, kind of maybe suicide a, a tier 8 tank into the Insidious Gaming side. But yeah, unless they lose a tier 8, like, yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. Uh, under extraordinary circumstances, uh, I really don't see them losing because they've got like uh, the, the, the better head points as well. I mean, this guy's like like virtually two shots away, like one shot, two shots away from getting taken out as well. So, uh, oh, another team going down. 
not that many options. And yeah, like uh, the tier point advantage now are uh, going to uh, no, uh, to ten, as a matter of fact. So uh, not only do they have to take out a, a, a tier eight, but they also have to take out uh, both T ones, even to just even hope uh, to tie this up. So oh, needless to say, like, one more shot in there. Uh, he, he does go down. So Robin getting the kill here. With yeah, and that's going to uh, decide it, honestly. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it's probably a GG if you ask me. And look at that, just uh, uh, a pretty nice even body count so far. Like we've got a Terry Ice Wolf to Batman and Robin each getting a kill. Looking mighty comfortable if you ask me, right? Yeah, and honestly, there's only a few minutes left remaining. All they got to just wait that time out. Insidious Gaming looking to possibly regroup at this point. Honestly, it's going to be extremely hard for them to come back uh, into this. Their best possible option at this point is just to try and tie this up. But even that is going to be hard to find. Honestly, what can you do with the... Okay, I know they've got three T69s left uh, with those motor loaders, but even so, they need to take out at least four tanks uh, to... Uh, or at least, like, three uh, tier eights, like, to uh, tie this up. Uh, well, I don't want to call it Mission Impossible, but uh, it required nothing less than a miracle uh, for them to come back into this. Yeah, so it's just gaming regrouping at this point, and I wouldn't be surprised if PPR are just still waiting those same positions. Well, if I were them, that's exactly what I would do. Or, or perhaps uh, squat the central hill top. Like, just really leave just Batman and Robin maybe to the west tower and just monopolize the central. But look at Antero, though. He's just completely defending that, and there's no possible way that Insidious Gaming can, can, can brute force their way through that. Yeah, indeed. So, uh, I think, honestly, well, I, I don't even call this a chance or a shot, but if I were them, I'd go towards the eastern village. Because the yeah, central yeah. hill top, that'd be suicide. Western Isle, that's suicide. So, the I eastern, think... The, yeah, the eastern... The Eastern Village is the only pop around at this point. Well, exactly. I don't want to say that they're... I mean, they, they, the way I see it, they've lost this anyways. But uh, uh, yes, it would give them the less excruciating uh, uh, way to the south to go towards the east. Uh, that's what I personally think. But uh, to be honest with you, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference at this point. Another thing I love about PvP is that they really use those T1s to their advantage. They almost always systematically send that T1 out first before any Tier 8s move out over there. So yeah, Commander Morte actually leading, uh, leading Batman over there to the Eastern Village. And look at that, Insidious Gaming going for an Eastern Village push. Yeah, indeed. And uh, well, it's, it's the logical option. It's the safest option they've got. Uh, I mean, although they virtually lost this, but... Um they're about yeah. to be spotted, though. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, uh, they actually I, might already have been spotted. You know, I'm kind of hoping that uh, they're just, uh, well, at least uh, give a good fight out there. Just go down with a fight. Uh, at least just to make a statement as well, because they were utterly dominated uh, on this map. I mean, let's be fair. Uh, this is this was a pretty one-sided set. Oh, oh he's water, like, yeah, damage. taking a lot of damage here. Oh, he did make some behind that rock. Yeah, yeah, he, he does make it behind that rock. And, of course, uh, their position has been completely compromised. So the surrounding maneuver is about to happen pretty soon. Look at that. Nikolai taking not a shot, probably another one as well. Yeah, oh, Chris about to go down there. Yeah, indeed. It's just, it's too much to handle right now at this point. Look at that. Uh, yeah, yeah Grits goes, goes down, and uh, Nikolai probably soon to follow, if you ask me. Elite taking a lot of shots to one. Terra is having so much fun from where he is right now. <laughs> He's got the high ground. Oh, He's got Batman the almost too. getting taken down right here. Uh, it's okay, because he, he always has the option of hiding behind a rock. I mean, like, you know, when, when you just, they haven't lost a single tank yet. You know what? Honestly, it might be a clean sheet. Possibly could be. Oh, and oh boy, Ice Water doing so much damage. He's just unleashing that all load, eh? 30 health on Nikolai right there. Elite also as well. Little Mac gonna come here to try and finish off Nikolai, and once he does, Elite is gonna soon follow. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it's just the only thing that uh, remains to be seen is is Ice Water gonna go down or not? He just oh, might. No, yeah, it's not he a clean sheet. It's not uh, a clean sheet. Actually. He went down, and uh, honestly, that's, that's about the only thing they could accomplish uh, at this <laughs> point. Like uh, a solid performance by uh, PvP Super Friends. What a response tying this up. And look at that, uh, uh, the game faces yep. on PvP. I think uh, really they're relieved uh, by uh, this uh, second set victory. Uh, you definitely do not want to trail to do love against in this game. Yeah, definitely. Most definitely. So, I mean, that's exactly what they needed, that, that confidence boost, especially in that second set. If they had lost that set on Mines, I really think it would have been a crushing blow to their morale, and, and it would have been much harder to come back after that. But since they actually tied this up in the second set, I think it's going to be uh, just really follow through. And indeed, and, and even more than the victory, I really think that uh, it's just the manner in which they won, just so commanding, so uh, very confident as well, the way that they went out there. Once again, I do want to say that Insidious Gaming did a really great job uh, just uh, coming into the second set, though. I think it was uh, kind of a, an all-in uh, tactic that they had starting up north. They're like, okay, you know what, uh, from what we know of PvP, uh, Batman and Robin are just bound to go for that West Isle, so we might as well try to charge in. If we can take at least one of them out, then we can regroup towards the, the, the central hilltop again and just hence get the advantage, but uh, 
you know what? Like Batman was actually telling me, no, you know, I can't tell you anything about <laughs> our tactics on, on on mines because we might have something rather special. But uh, the way yeah. I saw it, really, it was pretty much the same strategy they pulled off. Uh, throughout except their, that they started to sell. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but indeed, uh, once again, a pretty solid comeback. What a response from PP Super Friends. Now the war is definitely on. Uh, it's anybody's game uh, uh, at this point, of course. Uh, the end of set two. We're back to square one. Of course, we're going to move on to Himmelstor for a third set. But before you go, we're going to take a short break first.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're broadcasting live here at the Wargaming Command Center in Singapore to bring you, of course, the grand final of this 2013 Tanks Asia Season 1. And uh, yes, what a game so far. Really. I know. I mean, the first set, really Insidious Gaming. I mean, PP were a little bit aggressive on that front. They did go for a push, and Insidious Gaming defended that perfectly. But I mean, in the second set on mine, just PP just completely dominated. Indeed, what a response that was on mine. I was kind of concerned that uh, maybe Maybe, you know, in cities gaming, we'll just ride on the momentum and just really, really stick the nail deeper into the coffin. But uh, what a response from PvP. Uh, pretty rock solid, if you ask me. And we're dead even once again uh, as for this uh, third set, uh, which will take place on Himmelsdorf. I know, and this <laughs> is a map that both teams perform phenomenally well on. And I'm really, really, really curious to see what strategies you guys are going to uh, Honestly, like, you know, uh, if we're any other day, I'd just probably ask you any predictions. But <laughs> it's just way too, way too tough to call on. At this point, it's anybody's game. And uh, yeah, have you noticed? Obviously, a lot of nerves playing on, on, on each side as well. But uh, yeah, I, I get the feeling that today, whoever's going to come on top uh, will be the team that just really, really keeps their cool uh, the best throughout this match. In any event, we're now ready to roll out set number three. Let us go uh, to, uh, of course, Himmelsdorf without any further ado. as the yellow team starting to the south, their opponents of course in Cities Gaming starting to the north as the blue team. Yeah, taking a quick look at the tank setup. Both teams going with a pair of Amex 50s. However, the, after that, this is a pretty different tank line, uh, line that's going on for both teams. Uh, in Cities Gaming going with an extra Amex 50 and then a 110 and an Ice to finish that off. Whereas on the PP side, they went with a slightly more mobile setup, which is quite surprising actually. Oh, and look at that. Just Robin here cracking a shot, but he actually missed uh, just uh, trying to get a, a, a sneak shot on Nisa and uh, earlier on I look at that spread from PP they're just uh, uh, really not letting any loopholes here uh, pretty much except maybe to the West Railroad but at the same time they've got a scale doing a pretty good job uh, up there I'm, I'm assuming it's Batman to uh, the northern western part of that central park area they're also setting up a T6 name up the hilltop. Yeah, the which is very wise, matter of fact. Uh, but uh, if you ask me, considering the, the 350 uh, 100s uh, that the Cities Gaming decided to play with, they most probably will go for a, a hilltop push as well. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they sent at least a couple of those uh, aiming activities to this hilltop right here. A sort of has made it to the top for us because he is, of course, in that uh, faster tank uh, than the Insidious Gaming side. And look at that, the T1 going down. Indeed, uh, I mean, his position definitely has been compromised, but it matters not, uh, as a matter of fact, really just, uh, it means that, uh, well, unless I'm mistaken, he will be able to uh, uh, really just oh, take a nice, man. oh, huge push, like here, coming uh, from uh, the insidious side, uh, to the eastern side of the Central Park area, uh, they have been spotted. Yeah, oh, and bro, look at Robin actually trying to reposition here before yeah. the insidious gaming members make it to the southern part of the city, look at that, they might be able to, uh, they might be able to get Robin here. If, Possibly, if they commit to that. If they commit indeed, to but look at that. Nisa taking so much damage here. Oh boy, he might just go down as a matter of fact. Oh, one more no. shot will take care of him. He does go down. Oh boy, Nisa has been the... You know, in every single set, he's been the one like going down Oh, they first. do trade though for that AMX 50 there. So nice trade. They do lose another tank though. So a really uh, not a good trade so far from his oh, Gaming. Oh, but look at that. Little Mac, little Mac here does okay. go down. So uh, yeah, although Gritz is really low on hit points. But uh, so far, we are tied up uh, in terms of... Uh, Base well, capture starting as well. Yeah, indeed. Uh, not in terms of hit points perhaps. But uh, once again, PP playing that to perfection really. Because there's no way in the world... There is no way that Insidious is going to have time to actually come back and defend this. There are two tanks up there, pretty much. Ice World is actually going there right now. Oh, look at that. All those members of Insidious Gaming. Look oh at Griff's down to one shot. Oh, Just, there he, he does goes. go down. It's looking so grim for Insidious. Look at that. Elite, one more shot's going to take care of him. He does oh, go no. down. This is game over, folks. Yeah, most definitely. So even though the T1 on the Insidious Gaming side managed to stop the base capture, it is not enough to stop the rest of the PV forces just to command uh, that firefight to that Sun City. Uh, yes, it's just, uh, I don't know, I want to call it a wee bit too predictable, really. Just considering the uh, PP defense, it was almost suicidal to go uh, that way, pretty much, and try to bully your way uh, through uh, that park area to the east, and the PP were so much more ready uh, for them And, than and it, it was no problem for Ace would have actually come down from the hilltop. Yeah, exactly, and, and just help as well, so, uh, oh boy, kind of... 
I don't know, I don't want to call it desperation because they're not desperate yet, but uh, I don't know, it's just a, a wee bit harsh uh, on me perhaps, but I want to call it predictable. Uh, yeah, they just did a little right bit. Now. I mean, at this level, I really feel like people are actually trying to bait that out because they, I think they made purpose to send uh, one of their TC snipes up there just so that Insidious Game would spot that, and then once it's in the, uh, Insidious Game spotted that, they thought they had the outnumbering situation down to the southern city. That's why they went for the push, but there we go, PP gonna take this uh, third set. Yeah, and what I really did like as well uh, on the PvP side is that uh, they, they sort of uh, uh, did a good job just masking their defense as well. They didn't just go all out there to the Central Park area, they waited until uh, until the Insidious members were actually on the southern side of the map to uh, just surrounding uh, to surround them pretty yeah. much. So uh, a lot of patience, a lot of composure uh, so far like on the side and they're being rewarded to this video is just such a commanding lead once again. Yeah, most definitely. So, I mean, PvP, although they were the, the defending team the, throughout that team fight, it's just, they really just played that to perfection. I mean, with Ace Wooder coming back at the right time, you know, with this, I don't know if it was actually a bait or not. I don't know if they intentionally uh, sent Ace Wooder up there for the bait, but I mean, it just worked out. It just played into their hands. Well, I mean, they were being attacked, but at no point throughout the set did I get the feeling that uh, PP was just sort of losing control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, I had that I mean, same like, feeling. Once again, like, uh, lots of composure, lots of nerve coming out on that front, and, and, and quite paradoxically, when it comes to Insidious Gaming, I... I don't want to say that uh, they, they pushed uh, because they didn't have any other option, but uh, sort of I think they should have been just a wee bit more patient uh, on that front. Really, it's just at uh, least or at least maybe wait for Ace Wooder maybe to overcommit on the hilltop, exactly, uh, and then maybe go for the push. Yeah, indeed, because at this point they had only lost like one T once. So of course, uh, denied vision on that uh, crucial hilltop to the east. But at the same time, why would you go for such a rash sort of assault when you don't even know where your enemies are? Pretty much, like you know, the uh, chances were. I mean, uh, the only way that this could have worked out is basically if PvP had committed to the West Railroad, or it, or had they sent more tanks to the hilltop. To, to the hilltop, but even so, even had even if they had sent like more tanks to the hilltop, you know, it's only a matter of seconds before they can actually just come back and defend that base captive to the south. So, I don't know. I'm just uh, I'm just like questioning a wee bit just the choice of the insidious strategies for this particular set. Though I, I can't help but feel that uh, it was a little number one predictable, and then number two just a uh, well, a little over ambitious as well. Maybe you can pull this off against teams uh, that are much, much weaker. But at this level, you know, for a grand final of the yeah, season. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe Nice uh, was just immediately taken out while they were going for the push. I kind of feel bad because, you know, when I actually first met him to die, he was like, oh, you just keep saying bad things about me. <laughs> and I don't want to do that. But today, I can't help in terms of just stats. Uh, he was the first one to be taken down out of all tier tanks, a tier 8 tank, systematically in set 1, 2, and 3. As a matter of fact, so he's definitely going to have to just perform a wee bit better than that because right now he's crippling his team. Oh, I, I, I don't think he's like solo like, crippling his team. I oh, think of course not. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no. Yeah, yeah. In general, no, no. It's just like uh, in terms of uh, of teamwork coordination yeah, and, yeah. and most particularly positioning. Right now, PP is just doing a better job. Uh, yeah, just altogether. slightly. I mean, they're doing. They have the slightly better spread. They have the more vision. They have you know the tanks up to the hilltop uh, at least for the last set. Even on mines, they had a really great spread out. They really just you know, really actually just utilizing those T ones to perfection. Indeed, like they're just waiting to. Actually actually find out where the, the, the opponents are before actually pushing out and, and that's what's making all the difference in the world. I mean, it's just to be honest, once again, I don't want to be too blunt and too harsh on the Insidious members, but that, that, that push that we just saw like to the east of the park area, uh, that was just, I don't want to call it suicidal, but he, they were just like... Uh, they, they went in a little bit blind. Exactly, like yeah. they were just charging in into the unknown really, it's just, uh, and chances are, well obviously like considering the PvP uh, uh, roster quality, then uh, you would expect some kind of defense, some kind of response coming from that. So uh, uh, just uh, we just sort of wish that Insidious would be a little more patient because uh, they still we still had plenty of time in the set, mm -hmm. and it's not like they were forced to actually push out and just sort of meet their opponents because they on they had only lost like a T1 at this point. So uh, uh, really, it just they didn't have to do that. Uh, probably it would have been wiser to just sort of not camp, but at least try to get just, vision. Just be a little bit more cautious, or exactly. maybe just use those T1s. Maybe send out those T1s first. Uh, at least you know the T1 will take maybe one shot out from the enemy team. Uh, and 
that that's maybe that's possibly even like you know 300 health on your on your uh, on your tier, tier 8 team. Yeah, indeed. I, I was kind of surprised that Insidious uh, Gaming like uh, did not decide to actually send their last remaining T1 to uh, to the West Road uh, to yeah, the West yeah. Rail Road, pretty much to get try to get vision as to the southern section of the map. In any case, that's uh, a brilliant third set victory for PVP Super Friends. So they are leading this final two to one. Now, I do believe we are ready to uh, roll out for set number four taking place on Abbey, and and right now really just Insidious does need some kind of response yeah, right now. Yeah, definitely so. Indeed. Now, in any case, we are ready for this fourth set. So without any further ado, let us go to Abby for set before. So there we are, and uh, you know, we just took a quick look at the uh, player booth, and uh, it was kind of really just a contrast. Like, oh, I think uh, uh, we do have a DC though, a disconnect. Yes, yeah, we do. Actually uh, right indeed, there. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, Antare here just lost connection, so we're gonna have to restart this, obviously. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, it's kind of interesting to see because you know we we just uh, had like a, a quick look at the player boost, and uh, yeah, PP Super Friends are obviously very happy with themselves. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the game faces were definitely on for Insidious. Uh, yeah, looking mildly not stressed, but just. Not concerned. But, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and going back to what you said earlier about you know in City Gaming having to uh, having to win this set. If they lose this set, then that's going to be much point. Yeah, PP will only have to win one more to take this grand final here. So yeah, Insidious Gaming in the hot seat right now. If they don't come back right now, it's going to be much, much harder for them to come back later. Uh, indeed, you don't want to trail like uh, two sets to, uh, to uh, down, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. Uh, you want to stay neck and neck with your opponents, and uh, especially this fourth set like uh, on, on, on Abbey will be absolutely crucial. I mean, you know, we're not there yet, but uh, uh, if we were to witnessing to witness, like, say, a comeback, uh, I would probably just call this set the turning point. I mean, obviously, we don't know how it's going to turn out, but, uh, yeah, uh, uh, more than the actual set losses, uh, like, uh, both on Mines and on Himmelsdorf, it's just the, the way in which they lost, uh, which kind of concerns me a wee bit, because they had yeah, no answer. Yeah. Uh, as to the PEP onslaught, and that's what really just worries me. E even like in the first set, I mean, the, which they won, obviously, fair and square on Ants, and it was a brilliant uh, uh, defensive display, but uh, like you had said earlier, these guys had to come up with something really special uh, yeah. to, to block those tanks. So uh, uh, right now, if you ask me, just overally speaking, uh, I'd say that PEP is just a wee bit more comfortable right now. Yeah, definitely. So, and especially with that one set up lead they have at this point, they can afford to, you know, maybe lose one more set. I mean, obviously they don't want to, but I mean, it, they can afford at least to be more open uh, and more aggressive compared to Insidious Gaming at this yes, point. Yes, indeed. And uh, well, all in all, uh, in the general performance, uh, once again, uh, team formation, positioning, and especially coordination, general teamwork in general, the chemistry is just flowing a little bit uh, so far for PEP, and it's making all the difference in the world. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of really hoping for, not rooting, but hoping that Insidious can bring their A game back to the table because they desperately need it right now, as a matter of fact. Like, yeah, let us assume that it goes to a 3 1 for uh, PP Super Friends. Uh, they'd be in a world of trouble. I mean, yeah. like, they, they would require, like, quite literally, like, three back to back victories against and against a team like PP. That's a tall order, really. It's that that would be extremely hard to accomplish, and especially how the last couple sets, I mean, Wide Part Airfield, Airfield and, and Proctor Oscar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those three sets. I mean, any team I think uh, playing against PP Super Friends will at least uh, at least lose one of those sets. <laughs> uh, it, it's a, it's a, it would be a quite quite the gigantic mountain to climb, and uh, yeah, what a deficit to come back from. But uh, yeah, we're not there yet. Obviously, it's just uh, you know, l let us assume that uh, well, you know, Insidious Man do manage to come back and win and this. It's back to square one. Exactly, it's back to sk square one. So uh, yeah, uh, but once again, they really do need. This victory yeah, right now for the set. Most oh, I mean, otherwise, like yeah, like you said, White Park, Airfield, and Prokhorovka back to back. I don't know, yeah, right? But yeah. uh, yes, uh, even back home, like I'd still say that's uh, that's a pretty tall order. But uh, right now, because of those circumstances, obviously this is an offline final as well, so uh, nerves are kicking in as well. You've got the crowd uh, and uh, and. Let's not forget, like, you know, ISG is the home team here. Yeah, and, and I feel like they, they should be more, just at least a little bit more comfortable, you know, just playing on the home turf here. Uh, yeah, although PEP Super Friends, you know, they aren't, uh, they aren't uh, oblivious, you know, to these live scenes. But, I mean, just at the same time, you know, having to travel and having to just be in a new place definitely can bring some nerves. Well, I exactly. But, uh, well, you know, from what I've seen of the players, like, both teams looking mighty relaxed. But, I mean, yeah, but surprising, PP actually just looks a little bit more uh, comfortable than uh, PP at this point. Yeah, indeed. Insidious at this point. Insidious at yeah, this yeah. point. But, uh, well, in any case, uh, yes. Well, well, let's talk about Abby here because that's what we're going to play. And uh, let's talk about some of the tactics that we've seen uh, from both these teams, as a matter of fact, you know, Insidious and 
than PvP, uh, you know, uh, PvP Super Friends, quite interesting enough, uh, I mean, they've got a very specific way of, of playing on mines, we've seen that, but uh, do you reckon we can actually expect such a light uh, tank selection on Abbey as well? I wouldn't expect them to go super light, like, on, on mines, uh, but I'm expecting them to at least go one Amex 13, I mean, especially on those more open maps. And perhaps TC69 as well? Yeah, yeah, and probably uh, round it off, you know, with a couple T69s, and of course, you, you have to have at least, you know, two or three heavy tanks, so uh, I think both teams just are going to go with a pretty balanced setup. Great. It's just, like, I get the feeling that if Insidious actually just rolled out with a really heavy setup uh, here, I mean, assuming that PvP goes with their usual lighter uh, selection, if, if really just Insidious went the completely opposite way and charged through the Abbey, don't you think they could actually pull this off? Like, I mean, it's a surprise but, effect. Sort but of. see, the thing is, on Mines, they did have the much heavier setup compared to PvP Super Friends. I mean, Insidious Gaming on Mines, they, had, they, had, they, had, they didn't have a single AMX-13 on their team, but they just they were just outmaneuvered, outpositioned. They did go for a very specific str yeah, strategy, yeah, yeah. though. I mean, because, you know, they were in the lead originally, so, uh, so basically... Uh, well, apparently, well, just, okay, right now, I just uh, heard from our team as well. We do have uh, some technical difficulties here with the computers, I believe, like connection-wise. So, uh, uh, well, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to roll out with this full set just right now. Instead, we're going to take another break, but uh, stay where you are. We'll be right back.
right, uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You are still watching Home TV, and we're live uh, here at the Wargaming Command Center in uh, Singapore uh, to bring you uh, the grand final of this 2013 Tanks Asia Season uh, 1. And uh, yeah, well, once again, a word of apology. We had a bit of a technical problem here just uh, at the start of the full set. Yes, I believe one of the players just lost connection, and then we just anyways had to uh, revamp everything but we are now uh, ready and uh, well so far I gotta say that PP Super Friends looking mighty comfortable in this final. Yeah definitely so I mean they are two to one up at the moment so if they win one more if they win this next set on Abby then they're gonna have a really really commanding lead. Yes indeed so we're gonna have to see if Insidious can come back with some sort of response this is the fourth uh, set obviously taking place on Abby let us go there right now all right, so here we are, PvP Super Friends as the uh, yellow team to the south. Their opponents in Cities Gaming as the blue team starting up to the north. Just waiting a couple seconds for it to take selection. Let's go! Yep, and there we go. Oh, PvP going with that Pershing that they love to go with us. It's actually, I think it's only PvP and maybe the Night Eagles. No, no, it wasn't the Night Eagles. It was uh, Front Mission. Yeah, Front, front Mission, mission yeah. that only go the Pershing. Yeah. Indeed, uh, yeah, the Pershing, uh, that's like a medium tank that we have only seen like just uh, in, the, in the latter weeks of uh, this uh, season in the Masters League as well. But uh, yeah, uh, all in all, like really a nice little tank out there, just uh, maybe not as versatile as the T69 in terms of what it can do it's, out it's there. It's close to a heavy tank. Exactly. Uh, it's than, a, than a lighter one. Exactly. It's more of a, of a frontline type of medium tank out there. It just can take a lot of punishment. It doesn't have an overloader, but uh, yeah, w what a light setup though. Once again, coming from PP Super Friends, three medium tanks and a pair of 1390s. Of course, I mean, compared to Robin. Insidious Gaming, look at that five heavy tanks. So it's going to be really hard for PvP to actually penetrate the front line of Insidious Gaming. Uh, even though Insidious Gaming are kind of camped up there to the uh, kind of north uh, west part of the map up here on the ridge, uh, it's still going to be really hard for PvP just to engage any any way uh, in Insidious Gaming. Indeed, like right now, Insidious Gaming, of course, this is the perfect spot uh, that that ridge, that balcony uh, at the entrance of the west road to the north is the perfect spot to defend. Actually, both defend and attack as well. But I think they're going to go for the west road. I mean, it looks like it right now. I don't think they're actually going to go for a full-on push, but they're definitely going to slowly creep down to the southern part of the map, uh, which is very risky considering I, the mobility on the other side. What I would do is I would at least send one of my T1s first. They have both their T1s actually back towards their base at the moment. Uh, yeah, honestly, I would just leave one back there and then send the other one to scout for these uh, heavier forces trying to push down here on the western uh, side of the map. Well, you know, considering the fact that they're training down at scoreboard, I really think that the wisest option for them would actually just camp that. I know I hate camping and you hate camping too, but uh, I think the wisest option for them would be to split their forces and I think that's what they're doing. At least leave like a couple of those uh, MX-50s uh, uh, to defend the northern base because, uh, I mean, on the other side you've got so much mobility, right? Uh, so you never know what's going to happen like towards the Abbey or the Eastern Road area. And look at that right now, taking a look at PP Super Friends. As soon as the T1 was taken down to the West Road, they're like, okay, everybody switched to the Eastern Front. Oh, look at Batman here. Uh, yeah. Oh, boy, this is going to be uh, quite brutal, as a matter of fact. This is a, a, the turning point of this final, really. I mean, just if PvP manages to win this, it's going to be very hard for the CDs uh, to come back into uh, this final. Yeah, definitely. So, so Batman actually really close to the starting position of Insidious Gaming at this point. Insidious, uh, or PP did lose a T1 though, so they have slightly less vision uh, than the Insidious Gaming side. But Insidious Gaming, I don't think they actually know this going on at this uh, Well, they don't because, uh, I mean, they were the one like, who actually were spotted to the West Road. So as soon as the T1 went down, and yes, I do recommend that Muerte uh, was taken down, and that might be detrimental. But at the same time, they spotted every single heavy tank on the Insidious side, which is why they all switched to the Eastern Front. And right now, the way that I look at it, uh, you know, in if Insidious uh, decides to really commit to that West Road, they won't have time to come back and defend their base. I mean, which is why they left, like, uh, at least an MX-50, like, up there. But uh, by himself, is that going to be enough to I defend this? Honestly, that, that should be enough for, um, at least since he's, he's in an AMX-50, and he has six shots uh, to, to land onto the PP Murtho. Oh, a T1 getting taken out, Nikolai 69 uh, getting taken out in his T1, so it's all tied up at this moment. Although Batman did take uh, and, yeah, a Batman hit as well. Did, did take a hit for that, for that kill, though. Indeed, he's about like, uh, I'd say, well, 250, no, 300 down as Mad Max, so uh, yeah, just a bit of damage uh, was inflicted on uh, Batman, the team captain, of course, from PvP. 
But uh, yeah, you know, Insidious, uh, that, as expected, they're not really daring to push, and they sent another uh, 5100 to back up uh, the other one that was defending that they're ridge. Actually, back all their yeah, exactly. And they realized, look, like you know what? Okay, we got the heavy tanks, and even if we do successfully capture the base like down south, it's just we're leaving ourselves completely open to the eastern front. And because they hadn't met anybody to the west road, they're kind of figuring out, okay, you know what? Just PvP right now, just really close to our base, so we gotta come back and, and defend this. Yeah, and it should be very easy for them to defend this as well. I mean, if PP actually go for the base capture, which I doubt will happen. Yeah, they, they're not going to do that. I mean, like, because uh, that would be like charging in a blind into the open, and considering the superior tanks in terms of firepower, at least, like, uh, on the uh, Insidious side, it would be nothing short of suicide right now to do that. And Tyr has to be careful here as well, because he was spotted just a little bit earlier. So if the, if Insidious Gaming get vision on Antir once again, they'll have at least three or four tanks there just to, to immediately be shot on top. Yeah, and I think, yeah, well, he cracked a shot and immediately backed off, and I think that was really wise. Like, he can't just stay out there, especially with the MX-50s, like, uh, lurking up that ridge. Like, uh, he's just pretty much a sitting duck where he is, so uh, he can't afford to just be, uh, uh, to let his, comp his position be, like, completely compromised, at least. Yeah, so a lot of, uh, a little bit of passive play going on right now. Really, both teams know at least generally where the other, uh, other team is at this point. And look at Insidious Gaming actually going back really towards uh, their base at this moment. Both Nisa and Best guys here in their T-32s uh, kind of in the front line just to get more vision on those BP members. Well, to, to be honest with you, PvP doesn't really have uh, the opportunity to push because they're simply outpowered now and gone uh, at this point. Like, there's no way with, with the tanks that they've gone they can withstand like the firepower of 5100s and a pair of T32. So uh, right now, if there's any type of frontal engagement, it'd be a uh, ultimate slaughter actually on the PV side. Yeah. So uh, uh, they can't just really push out there, especially in an open field like that. So uh, uh, they're not going to have any option but just try to revamp the technique because yeah. right now, uh, if Insidious Gaming is just like stays there and just camps like uh, towards the base, there's really nothing that uh, PVP can do uh, to turn this around. As long as they try and continue to find these frontal engagements on, uh, against PVP, they should be able to come out on top in this set just due to the fact that no matter how PP try and engage uh, Insidious Gaming, they will be on the back front. Yeah. I, I, the only way for PP to actually come out on top in this is to either go for a, a surrounding maneuver or to, to catch a single tank uh, by itself. Yeah, indeed. I think uh, the, the the second option would just be uh, the, the wisest. But at the same time, like Insidious is definitely not allowing them to do so. Uh, they realize either. that if they split up, then it's, it's opening themselves for it. Exactly. Possible, uh, so uh, kill, right, yeah. right now, and because they're trailing in the scoreline as well, they're just really sticking together because they they know that as a group there is no way that PEP can just uh, outpower them. Yeah, that was definitely so. So Antares is continuing to try and poke down some damage onto the Insidious Gaming members right here to the eastern part of the starting point of Insidious Gaming. He hasn't taken damage uh, yet, surprisingly. And look at Ace Wood and Lunamac. Look at that positioning right there uh, in those T69, just ready to unleash their auto -loaders. Oh, but look at that. Uh, meanwhile, Insidious Gaming are like, okay, you want to camp? Well, we're going to go for your base right now. So, uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, actually, just uh, a huge, huge push coming to the west road as well. This is very risky at this point. It is risky because now their base is just it's wide open. open. Yeah, it's all they have is a T1 back there defending the base at the moment. They, they're they still uh, at, a, at a point on the map where they can still pull back to defend the base catcher. But honestly, I would, I would at least keep one aim back uh, towards that kind of top part of the bridge. Yeah, indeed. And look at that. They're already like midway down to the west road. This is so risky though, but uh, I gotta do the prompts here for just the, the gutsy play though, because at this level, like training, like one set behind, it does require a lot of courage to do this. Yeah, definitely. it really does. Because even right now, uh, well, I mean, they still would have, I think they would have enough time to come back and defend the base capture, but uh, wow, I just can't believe like the amount of risk that they're actually taking at this stage in this final. One thing they do have going for them though is that PP have no idea. That was yeah, uh, yeah, for yeah. now at least. For now at least. And they have that T1 back uh, at their target position, so they will be able to spot uh, if if PP do go for base capture, they will be able to spot that out. You know, uh, at least uh, a couple seconds earlier than if they had, if they didn't have a T1 over there. So uh, well, honestly, had they not uh, yeah, have yeah. that T1, like go down left, I'm probably I'm sure they wouldn't go for her for the west road either. Uh, it's the it's the only thing that that's allowing them to even attempt something like this. But I think PP smell something. Oh yeah. Right now. Oh yeah. 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 You see Antari and Kuba as well just uh, going back on well to the south like of the eastern road as well so they're going to be more than ready for this I mean not, not ready uh, as in like just uh, to defend a base but uh, at least like yeah the capture is not going to happen that easily as well once again like yeah uh, I mean as as most like uh, uh, tank gamers know for a fact is that on Abbey uh, the, the starting positions 
Shanghai is so wide open and so very easy to defend as well. So, uh, I mean, these are very hard to capture unless, like, everybody's been taken down. But right now, it's just uh, we've got uh, all tanks at almost full health as well. So, uh, it's very, very hard to just accomplish anything. And look at that, uh, a really interesting spread coming from the uh, city side. Yeah, we're splitting their forces, actually keeping two of their aims at these back towards the northern part of the bridge, whereas three of the, uh, the two TC TC ninth and an extra aim at the down to the southern part of the map. So, go on, Andy, if you ask me, I think we're headed like straight to a draw here. Quite with possibly, a, just yeah, like yeah. with less than a minute left, you know, I really don't see uh, either team just even trying to risk one of their uh, tier eights at this point. And really. they're too far away from each other. Exactly, exactly. It's just uh, right now there's too little time for us to actually have an engagement. And at this stage in the final, really, I don't see anybody taking like a, a, well, basically unnecessary risk at this point. If Insidious Game were all were all of like five of their heavy tanks moved up right now, they could go for a push. But since those two mates have started actually back defending the base, uh, yeah, there's absolutely no way that Insidious Game. Yeah, indeed. And, and when it comes to PvP, they know they have like uh, the the well inferior tanks in terms of firepower, so they're really not even creeping out of cover. So yes, this is most likely going to be a replay. We've got like 15 seconds left now left on the clock, and uh, definitely not enough to uh, create uh, the difference needed for a win. Less than 10 seconds now. But yeah, it's most likely to be drawn. Well, that's pretty much going to wrap this up for this full set. Uh, yes, of course, uh, Abby uh, without uh, any winners out there, but I'm not too surprised really. Uh, when Insidious first, uh, well, went for that West Road and were spotted by Commander Muerte, uh, I really think, like, okay, basically, either they're going to commit to this or most likely they're going to come back up north to defend this. And in which case, obviously, any advantage, surprise advantage that uh, uh, PP might have had is lost. Because, like you said so many times in a frontal uh, confrontation, uh, especially up to the north, there's no way PvP can come on top. Not with yeah. these tanks. And honestly, since this is a replay, you, the teams do have the option of changing tanks. If our PPs are friends at this point, I would at least go with a couple of either T69s, IS3s, AMS 50s, any of those heavy tanks that are that are really popular. Instead uh, of the the pair of 1390s. Exactly, exactly. Because I mean, even those AMS 50s were you know doing a pretty good job of moving around the map and trying to get as much vision as possible. At the same time, they could have just gone with a uh, instead of those AMS 13s, they, they could have gone with you know maybe a two. T32s and just gone for a frontal engagement. Yeah, that's possible as well. I, I mean, like, yeah, once again, I do remind our viewers, you can't, uh, you can't, well, have any substitutions uh, after a draw. Uh, so basically, the same starting position, same map, obviously, and of course, same players. You do have the option of, of uh, just uh, revamping your tank selection, mm -hmm. and, and I can't just uh, disagree with Andy here because uh, I think that if they want to uh, have the opportunity to even just create, uh, well, basically, a fairer type of confrontation, they need heavier tanks here. Yeah, uh, definitely I, I really so. think so. Anyways, let's find out what happens as we go back to Abby for replay of set number four. Alright, so here we are. Uh, yeah, once again, I do remind you, PP Super Friends starting to the south as the yellow team, and uh, it's Cities Gaming, their opponents starting to the north as the blue side. And uh, right now, well, you I mean, know. Looking uh, at the overview uh, of the tanks, I think neither team has actually changed. Yeah, anything. I don't yeah. see any changes whatsoever. And look at that, it's exactly the same. So a pair of T69s, a pair of 1390s, and a Pershing 4 PvP, and uh, their opponents, once again, like, yeah, exact same time lineup. So three uh, Amex 5100s and a pair of T32s. Yeah, so both Commander Commander Murte and Bravin going for that west road this time around. Instead of the last set, Bravin actually went straight for the Abbey. Yeah, uh, he, he tried to get uh, vision there, but this time around they realized that uh, Insidious Gaming might just you know, once again, go for that Western Ridge, so they're actually sending Robin this time. Honestly, with this kind of tank uh, selection, where else would you go except the West Ridge? Like, if you're starting up to the road. Yeah, definitely so. So, yeah, right now it's just gaming pretty much uh, with the same kind of starting moves right here, going for that top part of the Western Ridge. Uh, and honestly, man, I, I you could just see the same thing happen. Well, possibly, like, uh, once again, like, you know, if you, if you just roll out with, like, a 150-100 and, and a pair of T32s, there's only that many places you can actually go and, and be sure to have the advantage. Uh, and, and I think uh, that's just not a true anymore. So when it comes to PP Super Friends, they know this is a fact. So it's really up to them to just outmaneuver their opponents. But once again, it's extremely hard to do because with such a concentrated, like, uh, with such concentrated firepower, it's extremely hard to outmaneuver your opponents and create shooting opportunities to at least take one of those out uh, without taking risks yourself. So uh, it's going to be very, very hard uh, for either team, actually, to just uh, uh, try to make a difference here in this uh, full set. Yeah, so right here, leading the 
troops. Yeah, I feel like he's always leading troops. Sort of, yeah, yeah on the yeah, front lines. In the past, yeah, in the past three sets, he's always been uh, right there in the front lines, and they're slightly split into four sets. Just very slightly. I see that uh, while slowly but surely creeping down that road. Now, I get, I get the feeling that Nisa is just pretty much the tanker out there. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much like, yeah, just the. Uh, uh, Hopefully, just uh, yeah, just taking a lot of damage from his teammates and then uh, sort of uh, uh, holding the ground, holding the fort. Uh, unfortunately, so I mean, at least today he hasn't been just performing as as well as he usually does. Uh, he was systematically taken down. Like uh, I mean, the first tier eight at least to be uh, taken down on all three first sets. So uh, hopefully, he can just uh, uh, turn this around right now, or perhaps with a couple of kills. Um, Give him the confident boost that he needs in the final because, yeah, so many times have we seen like Nisa actually and this guy's just carrying the team like uh, for uh, everybody else. So, okay, oh. the first T1 goes down once again. Commander Muerte uh, to uh, the West Road who has been completely compromised. But uh, before he did go down, he did squad pretty much everyone. Yeah, he did. And another thing to mention is that Qua Vane on the PP side is also uh, scouting for PP. He's way up there, uh, towards kind of the northeastern part of the map. He, uh, he is accompanied by a uh, damage character. So, pretty, pretty nice positioning, honestly, from PvP, but if this just comes to any sort of frontal engagement, then I, d I just can't see PvP coming off top. Well, exactly. It's just there's so much difference, once again, in terms of firepower. I mean, look at those tanks, really. I mean, there's only that much that you can do with uh, with uh, such a light setup in a frontal engagement, and obviously they're, they're doing their best to avoid that, and just trying to use their extra mobility and speed to just outmaneuver their opponents, but... Uh, Oh, look at that, Nikolai here taking a lot of damage to the north. Uh, so once again, PP Super Friends have been uh, just so spotted uh, very, very close to uh, the Insidious starting position. He actually didn't go down quite miraculously. Oh no, he did. That's perfect. He was taken down. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's courtesy of Robin as well, just getting another, uh, adding another kill to his total body count, which is considerable uh, throughout the season. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing that will happen last set. You know, uh, the, uh, the first T1 going down towards that western bridge, and then the second T1 uh, going down on the opposite side. So, yeah, really, uh, it's a pretty similar kind of situation kind of playing out so far. Yeah, indeed, and we're four minutes down here in this uh, full set. Uh, yeah, I do mind uh, you. Uh, this is a replay of set of as a matter of fact, like, yeah, which ended in a draw. And uh, if you ask me once again, like, yeah, like Andy just said, it's, uh, it's a very similar stalemate uh, that we've seen, like, uh, uh, an east-west sort of uh, frontal separation here and uh, neither team really just wanting to take any uh, unnecessary risk here. I, I do get the feeling that DP is just sort of really wanting uh, to just create this opportunity uh, to uh, sort of engage their opponents but they can't just rush it blindly uh, because they're just so out there. Yeah, I mean, what the only way I feel like for PvP to win and take this set is just for them to catch one of those Insidious Gaming members off guard. And look at Nisa and these guys actually going for a possible gaze base capture. That is extremely risky, uh, but I think they realize that since they have the heavier tanks, if they just force PvP to engage them, they can just, you know, just win in that firefight. Uh, possibly. I think they're going to wait, though. Uh, yeah, they definitely just do not seem to commit to that just yet, but uh, I think they're just really trying to find the best position whatsoever, like, impossible before they... Oh, and here we go. No, just not yet. Oh, not yet. Actually, barely not starting yeah. the base capture. And there gonna, yeah, you go. Together, yep. Exactly. So the base capture is starting down south, of course. So alarm bell slightly ringing for PP Super Friends, but yeah, I mean, needless to say, they're going to have like plenty of time to come back and defend that still. It just really is a matter of how uh, they're going to organize their defense around this. I don't know. Had, had Insidious Gaming pulled down at, at least two of those aiming 50s down to where that other aiming 50 is, down to the western part, or down to the southern part of the western bridge, they would have honestly just won this set kind of single-handedly because two aiming 50s firing down from that ridge is just almost impossible to Oh, but look at that, just taking so much punishment out there, actually just at least two shots that landed, like, you know, right now uh, Ace Water and Little Mac missing a lot, uh, as a matter of fact. Oh, now it? the damage is being yeah. retaliated yeah, there yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Indeed, so uh, Little Mac who did take a hit, but uh, yeah, just Nissan taking a bit of damage. He took about like 300, I think. Yeah, Batman and Anti are in position now too, so they should have honestly no problem uh, to, to delay this base capture as long as they want to. Uh, and it's just now up to Insidious Gaming to either continue to go for the base capture, which I kind of don't recommend. I, I, I doubt that. I yeah, really yeah, doubt or, or kind of maybe regroup uh, with the rest of the forces. Yeah, they, they just got like too much leeway. And, and, and besides, like, you know, when it comes to uh, Insidious Gaming themselves, like, I mean, like PP, like, it's just they, they've got like the tank. 
Saints and the Visector is just uh, so much speed, so much mobility as well. So they got all the time in the world to actually come back and defend this. Uh, so definitely. Oh no, Robin, one shot away. Oh, he actually oh, he ducks. Rift, just missing that <laughs> killing blow. <laughs> and the, that was really, really close to call. One more shot would have taken care of him. And needless to say, like with Robin down, that uh, certainly would have been grim uh, for the PP members. He does manage to stay alive, but look at that like 146 yeah. hit points left. And he's going to be hunted down like mercilessly right now. He's got to get out of dodge right away. And look oh. at that Nisa taking a lot of hits too. Oh, he's now... Oh, one, oh, more, one shot. more shot will take care of him. Little Max actually lining up. He might he be reloading He might just be here. reloading. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I was thinking. With his pushing. Oh, Nisa gets away with this. Uh, so we're almost even here. Yeah? Because uh, Robin took so much hits like at the same time. But uh, Sud and Nisa... They're both, they're both one shot. Right? Exactly, exactly. So uh, yeah, Robin right here on screen. As we can see, 146 hit points out of 1100. But uh, you know what? Training Nisa for Robin would not actually be such a bad try. Yeah, altogether. I mean, training an AMX-50 for either an AMX-50 or AMX-13 for an AMX-50. Or even a T6, uh, T32, yeah, pretty, pretty worth the worth worth the trade because not only do do the uh, AMX50 and the T32 have more hit points, uh, it has more firepower as well. Indeed, and Batman getting another crack here at this guy. So uh, yeah, you know, if you ask me, like right now, PvP Super Friends doing an amazing job uh, in terms of micromanagement. Like they're really, really just uh, doing a wonderful sniping uh, job so far. Uh, every single Insidious Gaming member just uh, well under pressure a wee bit, just uh, uh, taking uh, hit points here and there. Uh, yeah, and this is exactly what they need to do to take this set is just to slowly whittle down and engage those heavier Insidious Gaming forces from a safe distance and not allow them to get trapped and just to just get overpowered by the, the heavy armor and the heavy fire. Well, I mean, at least until they're sure that uh, they yeah, actually yeah. have enough hit points advantage to engage their opponents. But uh, yeah, right now we're not there just yet. Uh, this is going to be really interesting, actually. We're down to a minute and 50 here in this full set. And look at that. Uh, a huge, huge push coming from Insidious Gaming. This is actually really risky. No, actually, they just, I don't think they're going to commit to that just yet. No, uh, they're all that rich. Like, yeah, yeah, it's just... Exactly, they're on the southern edge right now. It's gonna be very risky for them to even attempt anything at this point. Look at that, this guy is so low. He's about like uh, at 500 as a matter of fact. So two shots would take care of him. I don't know, PvP just have the, uh, such a huge hit point advantage at this point. I wanna just say for them to go in because even though they might do uh, a couple of takes, but actually, you know, Batman's starting to take damage right here. Uh, you know, Nisa is down to one hit. He's <laughs> like dodging shells <laughs> left and right. Seriously, yeah, yeah. this is hilarious. I can't believe uh, he only took like one hit, and even that one hit was enough to uh, just, uh, well, take a good chunk uh, of his life off. I'd say like, yeah, just a, a little less than 400. Uh, so, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if we went for another draw, mate. I mean, quite possibly. Point. We do have a less than a minute now repeating here. PvP Super Friends, they have a really big advantage. They should just take a little bit more advantage from that. Well, maybe, but at the same time, you can't take away the fact that Robin is one shot away from dying. So, I mean, you know, charging you know, him, I mean, leave Robin back. Yeah, but with uh, only four tanks, Abbey. man, with only four tanks against this kind of firepower, I wouldn't feel comfortable myself. Uh, I'd rather replay this uh, if I if I were them. Uh, Quite possibly, but you have, to, you, have to, you have to note that Nisa is also down to one hit away. From yeah, that's so. that's very true. Nisa they, is they down. They can possibly like rush into those two T32s, but then again, you know those three AMX 50s up there on the hill are on the western side. Which of full the auto range, loaders, mate? <laughs> it is going <laughs> to just completely t demolish any exactly. tank, the, any tank attempting uh, to take out either Death Guys or. Uh, or his other T32, yeah, or Nisa. Indeed, so with only 10 seconds left on the clock, uh, if you ask me, we're most likely going to go for yet another replay of this full set, but uh, Unless yeah. Unless they can somehow amazingly get uh, a final second kill here. They but, won't. Uh, yeah, I don't think they so. Won't. Yeah. They won't. All right, so that's going to do it. Once again, uh, PP Super Friends and Insidious Gaming not being able to just uh, sort of find a winner here on, on Abbey. But I'm not too surprised because of the tank selection right now. Really, PP Super Friends, unless they do an extremely good sniping job, just sort of draining the hit points little by little, like they did uh, this time around. But unless they can do more damage without taking hits themselves, Robin being like one shot away from dying is not allowing them to engage. See, but what I was saying, you know, before we, we replayed this the, the set again, uh, I think had they just gone with, uh, you know, it just trade at least one of those Amex 13s for a heavier tank, they could have uh, 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 risked going in for, for a frontal engagement. Yeah, I think because those tanks on the city game were just so low that had they just had one tank, maybe even just just a single T32 or an IS-3, for example, it would have been enough for, for, the, for that heavy tank to take the brute of the force and then the lighter force to come in from behind and go for that flanking maneuver. Yeah, I think, uh, once again, you, you said it all. I think the PP Super Friends, if they want to have like uh, more of a significant chance to win this, uh, they, they got to start like sapping the light 
life or age but earlier as a matter of fact and, and the best scenario would, would be to take out a T32 pretty much because MX-50s like even especially when they're clustered uh, you've got Batman and Robin they can actually at maneuver them as well at close range as well so uh, yes, once uh, if possibly those uh, that pair of T32s can be taken care of early which is once again a tall order but let us assume that it can then uh, definitely it would give a serious option onto the PP side to actually take the advantage but we're not there yet once again I would love to actually see PP just uh, you know tweaking maybe one or two tags out there or even you know even like a T69 trading for you know an IS3 or T32 I mean just one single heavy tank on Insidious Gaming or uh, on PP side could really just uh, just be that little extra something for them to take home this set. Well, even even out the odds in case of a firefight, pretty much. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think they need just maybe one or two tanks, just two tanks to uh, they're able to uh, to just take, take a damage. Lot of damage. Yeah, 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 take damage some more on the front lines, or possibly just uh, maybe I know that Batman and Robin are very fond of their French MiG 1390s, and who wouldn't be, especially the way that they play. But uh, maybe switch those for T69s, perhaps. Like, why not uh, yeah. at this point? Because right now they clearly do not have the firepower um, enough or firepower. The Exactly, all the hit points to actually engage comfortably uh, their opponents. Because you know what, like, okay, they have to land so many shots, like, on those T-32s to even, like, dent uh, the armor. Whereas uh, when you've got Batman and Robin, like, yeah, you take one hit, that's, like, 400 hit points out it's of like 1,100. That's, like, a quarter of your life yeah, already exactly. gone. Yeah. A quarter, like, uh, potentially even a third, actually, if you take a direct hit as well. So uh, it, it really doesn't leave any room whatsoever for mistakes out there for PvP. So uh, uh, I think that uh, Insidious right now is actually playing the right strat uh, altogether because... Especially against the lineup against PvP. Super yeah. at this point. Since PP are going with such a light setup, all they have to do is just group up, have the heavy forces, have the heavy firepower, and have the heavy armor just to brute force their way and bully, essentially bully their way through the PP lineup. Yeah, indeed. But, uh, well, once again, I, I do want to commend, like, Insidious Gaming Strat right now. It might look like a, it, it's a lot of camping as well, but I think it's the perfect sort of, uh, at, at least, the tank selection. They're not, tank honestly, they're not camping at all because well, what no, they're yeah. doing is they're, they're engaging from a long range. Exactly. They're engaging, PP are, the, they, they, they cannot afford to to go for a frontal engage, they're just staying back and just trying to land as many shots as possible. All right. Well, in any case, uh, we're gonna have to go back to Abi for a re replay of set number four and uh, find out if uh, there's gonna be uh, any changes in tanks lineup. Anyways, we are now ready to roll, so let us go back to Abi for a replay of set number four. All right. So here we are. Just can you see any difference from where you are? A shooter actually. No, I think it's the same exact tank setup actually. Yeah, possibly. I don't see any changes out there. And yeah, yes, yeah. no, there are no changes. So still a pair of 1390s, a pair of T-59s, and that Pershing uh, on the PP side. Their opponent still rolling out with a pair of T-32s and, and of course, those three Amex 5100s on the uh, Insidious side. Yeah, so early on, I mean, PP, at least from PP's point of perspective, they are going for a really similar strategy. Look at that Insidious game. Oh, and see this gaming yeah. just, uh, okay, well, basically, uh, let, let's keep that to ourselves. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this one's going to be pretty interesting, you guys, mate. Yeah, definitely. So, they, they definitely did have to do something uh, just a little bit different. They, they, they just could not be more predictable, uh, especially the, the first two times we played on Abbey. Uh, they just did pretty much the exact same thing. So exactly, it, and I think that PvP, uh, especially the second time, we're getting the best of them. They, they have well, been spotted, in, in though. The they have yeah, been yeah. spotted. So, uh, their strategy pretty much uh, being being uh, exposed early on here. Only Desk Guys being spotted, but PP can pretty much assume that at least a couple more tanks are, are supporting Desk Guys over there. Well, exactly, and the PP responds straight up, actually just sending uh, uh, one of, the, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's one of the T1s like here to the West Road as well, probably yeah, Commander Wente yeah, yeah. uh, or Gauvin uh, as well, but no, no, it was Commander Wente as a matter of fact. So Desk Guys oh, here okay. just uh, leading the troops again, like, uh, but as you said, their push has been completely compromised, like to the Eastern Front, so uh, they really have to watch out. Yeah, 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 Gauvin goes down, so yeah, uh, first Blood drawn on the uh, insidious side. That was Desk Guys, the captain, just getting the first kill here in this full set. Honestly, if Insidious Gaming should want to win this, they should just continue this push. They should just continue to bully their way through, just like what the Immortals love to do. They just love, especially when they're going uh, uh, against a tank setup such as the uh, such as what PP are going with right now. Immortals, they just love to just push down either straight down the middle of the map or one of the sides as a group of five and just really just bully their way through those ladder tanks. Well, because there's what? no way those ladder tanks can stop them. I think uh, they're they're. They're actually hearing you up on this one, it looks like it. Uh, I mean, at least, like, well, this guy is venturing, like, further down to the south uh, on, on that east road. 
but uh, yeah, it definitely looks like they're going to stick together and just uh, uh, perhaps really just try to bully their way, uh, as you said, pretty much, because they know that uh, in a front engagement they can't lose. They simply cannot lose at this point. I, yeah. I mean, unless like really just they, they mess it up completely, but I don't see them doing that just yet. Yeah, and honestly, all they all Insidious Gaming have to do is just send, keep those two T32s in the front line, have at least you know a couple of aiming these right behind that, and then have your last aiming these kind of stagger behind those front four tanks just in case PvP go for a push. Uh, you know what? If I were PvP, as a matter of fact, I'd go hunting for this T1s first. Like you know, I'd send like Batman and Robin, like uh, who obviously uh, have uh, that pair of like uh, 3090s to hunt down the T1s, because then like he would just completely annihilate uh, the vision on the uh, Insidious Gaming side and you would force them to split up actually and just at least leave a couple tanks to defend the northern base but uh, right now PP is just uh, well sort of being uh Kind of not passive, but uh, sort of playing more conventional than usual here. Just uh, yeah, having a, a rather strong presence to the opposite side of the map. Yeah, and the thing is, PP they they know this is coming, so they actually reposition their tanks towards the western, the bottom part of the western ridge there. So they should they're, they're in a really good position to defend the base capture if Insidious Gaming go for that. But if I were Insidious Gaming, I wouldn't go for the base capture. I'll just rush the hill, go around the base. Uh, around the the capture point, and then kind of hug the and rush kind of the, the entrance point to the southern part of the ridge, and then engage PP in that. Minute. I need lots of ifs out there. We're already uh, down to uh, six minutes and uh, twenty seconds here in this full set. Uh, plenty of time still to uh, turn this around. But once again, uh, it's a pretty uh, even selling situation. Uh, although the positions have been switched <laughs> this time around, interestingly enough, this guy's yeah cracking a shot, but uh, not hitting anything. They're being spotted right there as well. Yeah. Insidious Gaming have a pretty good idea as well of where PP are camping. Oh, absolutely, absolutely yeah. Yeah, yeah, because they were spotted, they knew PP spotted them, they knew that PP were going to reposition to defend against this, so they have a really good idea of where generally, at least generally, where those PP members are. They actually, uh, I believe it was either Insidious Gaming or Team Efficiency when they played against each other, uh, they, they they took like a couple of their enemy sympathies and they just completely unleashed their autoloaders yeah. into into nowhere. Uh, they had zero vision on, on the Hemmelsdorf. And Hemmelsdorf, they actually Hemmelsdorf. landed at least, you know, three or four shots. Exactly, because, uh, well, especially on a map like Hemmelsdorf, you know, you know that uh, they're are going to be tanks like at the base of the hill pretty much, so uh, yeah, you don't even need vision, uh, you just know that as a fact, so uh, yeah, it was pretty impressive to see that kind of play, but ooh, and look at that this guys, yeah, ice guys water, take a shot here, please. yeah, I think so, because, oh, there's yeah, the angle, there, there you go, uh, so uh, a pretty nice shot here coming from ice water, so uh, again, this guy's yeah, going to be a little bit scared now, uh, well, him. exactly, he was a little in the open, if you ask me, really, it's just uh, not very wise to actually sit there. Oh, but Elite actually being spotted while he's going back and retreating back to his base. He did take about a 3 damage, so I mean, not, not critical at all, but Batman right there spotting him. Right there, I think what Batman is trying to do is he's trying to, uh, trying to just follow one of those tanks and then possibly go for like a 1v1 situation where he can just outmaneuver that enemy, uh, enemy tank. Well, hopefully he's going to do that with a 5100, because with a T32, he wouldn't stand yeah, the chance. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so once again, uh, well, not much movement if you ask me, uh, definitely a, a really interesting spread coming from the PvP side though, but uh, once again, they don't have the option of just going out there in the open and engage, really, it's just uh, too detrimental for them, they don't have the tanks to do that. Yeah, PvP are doing, they're playing a very uh, kind of reactive strategy against this gaming at this point, they're oh. really um, just... Uh, forcing a serious game to make the first move, and then they're just using their mobility to get get out of a uh, harm's way, and they get and they reposition to to their advantage. Well, lots of movement coming on the insidious side, if you ask me. Just don't want to really give it away, considering the fact that uh, we're live in an offline tournament. But uh, wow, oh boy, this is going to be pretty brutal. It's going to be an, an extremely intense end to this full set, if you ask me. Yeah, most definitely. So so much is on the line for both these teams. Oh, absolutely, this is a critical set for both these teams. Yeah, which is why, like, I mean, the tension is palpable uh, at the second. Why do you think we had to replay this, like, twice already, uh, if not three times? Well, once again, uh, we're not there just yet. About three minutes and a half left uh, in uh, this fourth set. And, uh, well, this guy's elite, Nisa and Gritz here. Yeah, going to, down. Well, yeah, uh, not the T1 going down. Yeah, Robin actually uh, getting a nice shot to Nikolai. Yeah, 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 definitely. So, uh, well completely evenly tying this up, but uh, it's not going to really make that much of a difference unless unless somebody comes out there in the open, which you reckon is going to happen? 
I highly doubt that, especially on PP side, I highly doubt that any of these tanks will actually risk uh, taking too much damage, especially against the lineup on NCS aiming side. Who wants to, who would go out of cover against three aim X 50s I mean, if they, if even, you know, just two of them land, let's say, you know, three shots apiece. Oh, that's more than enough yeah, to take yeah, you out. Yeah. Oh, exactly. At least, like, just create a critical situation. Oh, uh, you know, Batman and Robin really do have to watch out for this, though, oh, because. You know what does disappoint me a wee bit is that PvP's preference might have been just a wee bit more aggressive to the northern side, uh, which yeah, they haven't yeah. been this time yeah. around. Uh, I think they're just really concerned about that uh, that eastern early push that we've seen pretty much. So uh, yeah, stress levels being high, they're just being extremely passive and defensive onto uh, their own southern position. Uh, but uh, I think that this time around they could have had like a, a crack up north, really, and just yeah. kind of slightly disappointed that they didn't. I just uh, want to see Batman and Robin, you know, just roll around. Up, yeah. as, you know, roam around as that duo they love to go, especially on mines. Uh, they love to just kind of group up, roam around the map, take out those T1s first, and then get those flanking maneuvers on those uh, heavier forces. Yeah, indeed. And, uh, they, they, they were about to go for a possible you know, base rush, just clear out those T1s and possibly defending that, but they are just being a little bit more cautious because they just they lost all vision on his team. Well, exactly. They don't exactly know. I, for all they know, they, uh, they could be all the way yeah, they, they, yeah. They could be like two MX fifties, uh, one hundreds up there, and that would be more than enough firepower to take care of at least one of them, uh, which obviously would be uh, quite crucially oh, detrimental. Yeah. Can look at that. Exactly, and Cities Gaming uh, just uh, actually went back to defend this as well. So uh, most likely, we are going to go for yet another replay. Yeah, quite possibly. About a minute and a half, so, I mean, these teams are, are still fairly far away from I mean, they're on opposite corners of the map at this point. At least the, the, the majority of the force on each team, so... Yeah, I, I think I have to agree with you that we're probably going to see another replay. You want to bet on it? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, so I think I think you you, you could just uh, make a safe bet right now because I don't see anybody going down with the next minute. Really, it's just too risky. Really, who would come out of cover at this stage of the competition? You know, let's just let's just put it this way. You know, if you win today, you get sixty grand. Would you Would you come out of cover? Because I don't think not. I would. Yeah, yeah probably, I, I wouldn't. Probably. I wouldn't. No, most of the time, yeah, definitely, it's just, uh, I would just give a, a w maybe a word of warning to both teams for just uh, sort of lack of action. But uh, as much as of today, I really do understand uh, both teams' perspective, especially with this type of, uh, of setup on this map, with this kind of honestly, tank selection. Honestly, the, I think the easiest solution, at least for PvP, is just is go to, with heavier forces. Exactly. Just if like they just tweak, go with heavier yeah. forces, then they can just afford to go for that frontal engagement. Indeed, indeed. I, 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 we keep on seeing this uh, replay after replay, but uh, right now, they just don't have the weapons to uh, engage their uh, burnings the on the frontal. Exactly, all the armor as a matter of fact, so uh, just a, a little heavier presence uh, w would not hurt them. I don't think so. Uh, but uh, yeah, right yeah, now... I mean, even just, uh, you know, trading one of those Amex 13s for... Exactly. Because you know, right now they can't even afford to just go out there, especially not Batman and Robin, because like uh, two or three shots are just like absolutely too detrimental. Like we had seen the first time we played on, on, on Abby, as a matter of fact, like uh, Robin had taken so many hits early on. So yeah, once again, if I had to repeat myself, I'd say that PP needs maybe Maybe just a wee bit of a chain chain. Perhaps. Yeah, I mean, I mean, because you can't change your players, you can't change your shot location, tanks. you can't even change. Yeah, you, the only thing you can change is your tanks. So, I mean, honestly, actually, the the first time we replayed that, uh, uh, the first time we replayed, you know, had PVP just had one more heavy tank. They would have just been able to push in onto those insidious game members and then take them out. Yeah, they would have had the at least the option of trying that out. Because yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I do remember the, the the first time we replayed once again. They because they did have the advantage in terms of hit points. They did a great job like sniping and draining uh, the insidious members uh, out of their life pretty much, but uh, still didn't really have a clear advantage. I mean, not. Uh, that wouldn't it wouldn't justify like a push out there. And honestly, honestly, like yeah, just switching that that pair of 1390s, maybe even just for TC9s, would give you that advantage. Now, obviously, you would have to sacrifice a lot of mobility uh, on, on that front. But, but I uh, feel like Batman and Robin aren't even roaming around enough exactly. to, to, uh, to really yeah. take full advantage of that, that speed and mobility of indeed, those Amex indeed. The only the You only, do that same thing with even a T69. Uh, the only way that they would actually just be able to really, really capitalize on that movement is if they were able very early on uh, in the set to take care of those T1s. Yeah. Uh, Yep. And, and that would really force Insidious to just sort of split up and at least leave a couple of tanks up to uh, their own base, which would even out the firefight. But uh, if Batman and Robin cannot, uh, cannot just actually take, a, take out those T1s, then obviously it's a, it's a tall order for them. Anyways, we're going to have to go. It's our third replay, I think. It is. Or it fourth? Is. 
third. Third. And I'm losing count because uh, we've been there so it's many the times. the time we're playing, but our third replay. Indeed. So, uh, yeah, let us go back to Abi for yet another replay of set number four. You reckon there's been any changes? I don't see no changes so far though. Not from where I am. Yeah, zero changes. Exactly, so the exact same tank lineup, like uh, just in case you've tuned in, I do remind you this is the grand final of course of our uh, tank season one. This is PP Super Friends against Insidious Gaming. PP in the lead, two sets to one here, and uh, yeah, this is the fourth time we actually play on the Abbey for this fourth set. And uh, yeah, not well, not any changes whatsoever in terms of uh, tank selection, as Andy said. So we still have a pair of T32s and three MX50s, 100s when it comes to, uh, uh, well, Insidious Gaming starting up north as the blue side and their opponents, uh, PvP Super Friends with a pair of 1390s, a pair of T69s, and at Pershing as the yellow team down to the south. I'm actually just curious to see, you know, had uh, if we were to replace Insidious Gaming with the Immortals right now, what do you think the Immortals would do? They would just charge in straight down the middle, down the middle. in the Abbey, yeah. yeah, in the Abbey, yep. and not even think. Uh, yep. They'd just yep. be like, okay, just perhaps like three IS-3s and uh, two MX-50s, 100, uh, and just charge in. Yep. Leave yep. the MX-50s up there just uh, for cover fire and just really charge in that Abbey. I think that's what they would do. And I, I think I mean, Insidious Gaming could possibly even just, you know, take a, uh, a play from that Immortals playbook and just, you know, rush that Central Abbey. Honestly, Every single time we played uh, on Abbey today, PP have at least sent one tier 8 tank to that central Abbey. Yeah, that's true. And the thing is, if uh, Insidious Gaming were to rush that central Abbey, they will, they could probably just trap that, that tier 8 and then get that early uh, advantage. Uh, possibly, yeah. Once again, a lot of ifs. Yeah, it's very yeah, easy yeah, for yeah. us to actually say that, but uh, yeah, once again, uh, well, right now uh, on the PP side, uh, even more standard, uh, even more conventional than uh, what we have seen so far. Yeah, definitely. So, oh, and look at that. Ooh, Insidious Gaming being spotted. There's both uh, side of their fronts being spotted right there by PvP. So PvP, A very interesting spread, though, coming from uh, ISG, I gotta say. Like, yeah, both yeah. to the west and to the east. PvP know that they have some forces, though. So yeah, they, yeah. they just gotta be a little bit careful not to get outnumbered. Uh, especially those two tanks to the, to the east. Those two tanks cannot get outnumbered at this point. Well, yeah, it's just, uh, I, I don't think uh, they have like uh, the information when it comes to just the normal tanks uh, when it comes to that split just yet. But uh, yeah, once again, like, you know, once you take out a T1, uh, and, and quite systematically, Commander Muerte uh, on the PP side has been the one tank that went down first, quite systematically. It's because he's, he's, oh, he always goes to the west, to, to the west uh, road. Yeah, to the yeah. west road, and he always tries to go uh, as far north, north as possible. Yeah, so, ooh, this guy's here, just in a little bit of trouble if you ask me. Oh, Look at go that! They're going, they're going to go for it. Oh, this oh, guy! Oh, guys. one more shot! One more shot, he does go down! Oh, wonderful job coming from PvP. It's only a 7 tier point advantage at this point, It though. is only a 7 tier point advantage, but uh, that's really early in the set. Uh, we're only down to 7 minutes, so uh, yeah, uh, definitely a huge advantage now uh, going uh, uh, to the PvP side. That's a T32 that went down. That's, yeah, that's huge. That's what I was talking about, is Insidious Gaming could not afford to get outnumbered, especially Especially on that eastern side of the map, PP realized that uh, Insidious Gaming had split their forces. They sent all of their tanks towards that eastern ridge and then managed to take down uh, Death Guys right there. So honestly, right now, Insidious Gaming looking in a little bit of trouble. Uh, you know what? That was a really great blitz maneuver. Uh, just commando style going in and really just taking care of that uh, uh, of the T32 uh, really quickly and then just retreating again. And, and that's obviously going to give them a huge, huge boost uh, uh, throughout the, the set. They do need one more tier point at least uh, to take this. Uh, if we go to uh, a draw, I mean, if, we, if, if the clock like runs out, so uh, they would need at least another T1 kill uh, to capitalize uh, on that uh, tier point advantage. We're not there just yet, but obviously, like yeah, uh, minus the T32, that's uh, that's uh, clearly clearly detrimental uh, on the Insidious side. And honestly, that's exactly what PP needed to, to, to have the big advantage on this map, is to take out one of those T-32s early. You talked about this, Philip, in the, probably the, the first, the second time we played uh, on Abbey, where if one of those T-32s on Insidious Gaming goes down early on, PP will be able to get, and, and maybe even afford to have a frontal engagement. Yes, indeed. And yeah, another uh, ISG tank like here being spotted to uh, the uh, northwest. Oh, oh, and taking a huge, huge hit. Once again, oh, Batman do <laughs> doing wonderful job here. Uh, cracking another shot. I don't know if that one like went through. He did take a wee bit of damage uh, uh, in the process, but definitely worth it. Yeah, definitely. Oh, oh and, and that's the T1 goes down. The T1 goes down. So that is eight tier points now in favor of PP Super Friends. 
friend. Yeah, and that's going to force uh, Insidious to actually just come out of cover and engage them. Uh, and uh, needless to say, well, 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 PvP Super Friends taking a serious option here for this full set. Uh, we're not there just yet, obviously. Considering like uh, how heavy uh, the uh, Insidious forces are, they can still turn this around, but uh, yeah, that's going to give them a huge, huge, huge advantage. Yeah, so Insidious Gaming just trying to regroup at this point because they realize they're going to have to push eventually. Yeah. So they're, they're just repositioning right now. They're kind of expecting, or they're not expecting, but they're kind of uh, posting up for just in case PP decide to push this, but I really highly doubt that. Just do, first of all, due to the fact of how many times we've actually played on this map, and then also due to the fact that uh, of how much is on the line at this point. Yeah, exactly. No, Insidious Gaming is going to have to uh, engage at some point. Like, I, I, I have to agree with you. I don't see PP Super Friends like, taking any unnecessary risk right now, and they did a good job just uh, even like uh, adding to the damage uh, so far. I believe it was uh, uh, Grit, or no, Elite. Uh, that did take a, a wee bit of hits. He had just tried to regroup with his forces. Uh, but uh, yeah, as long as PP does not make any serious mistake, they should be able to capitalize on this advantage. Oh, most definitely. I mean, as long as they stay undercover and as yeah. long as they just keep doing what they're doing exactly. right now, just, just uh, throwing down those small uh, amounts of damage from far range onto those Insidious Gaming members, they should have no problem with taking this. Exactly. It's just taking like a one or two shots here and then just slowly but surely sapping the hit points out of the uh, Insidious, the remaining Insidious tanks. And they're doing that very, very well. I mean, like, you know, considering the spread, especially like Batman and Roman, they're just uh, doing so much damage left and right. Look at that. You've got Elite down to 900. You've got Grits down to uh, 900 as well, like just a little less than 900. And let's remind the viewers, like, you know, if there's one heavy tank that's really low in terms of armor, it's that Amex 15. Yeah, uh, This is so. definitely the most vulnerable of all heavy tanks uh, when it comes to uh, uh, to the armor. So, uh, yes, once again, PP Super Friends uh, looking mighty comfortable this time around and automatically a lot more movement as well. Yeah. They, they, they just realize that they just got to be mobile. They got to be safe uh, just for them to secure this victory. Exactly. They just got to keep on the move uh, to uh, just uh, not give uh, their opponents any any idea whatsoever as to their location. As as long as they keep on doing what they're doing right now, they really should come up top. Yeah, I mean, but, I mean still at this at this current situation, if it comes to like a full on head-on engagement for in close range, Insidious Gaming can still come out on top. Oh, definitely. But but just if it's like a Exactly, but if they keep on doing what they're doing right now, guerrilla style, yeah, hit and yeah, move, stick yeah. and move, stick and move, then all oh, they should be able to uh, to pull this off. Yeah, I I, I, I really have no doubts uh, for PP to just secure this victory. I mean, they've done this many many times. They know exactly what to do and exactly where they need to position themselves. But look at Robin Ooh, actually Robin trying to move is over like, to the, yeah, uh, Oh boy, this is he dodged about. Four shells <laughs> right there. At least five, yeah. I, I think. It's a miracle he didn't get shot, uh, if you ask me. And, and look at the look grits. At Chris, yeah, yeah. grits like getting instantly punished uh, for his cheek. But uh, you know what? That was a pretty close call. Because I mean, Robin had Robin taken like at had, least had any of those shots landed it, like, and damaged his track. Exactly, he would have exactly. been dead meat out there. Seriously. So uh, yeah, once again, a, a bit of an unnecessary risk here. I want to say coming from PVP. Oh yeah, and look at Batman doing some more damage on oh, those cities. Oh yeah, members. yeah. Ba Batman though just. Uh, Oh, is he trying yet? Oh, oh he's got to get out of here. He's got to get out of here. He's got to get out. Oh, one, one more shot. shot. We'll take out Batman. One more shot. One more shot. He does dodge wow. it. Oh, he's got to get out of there. Dude. He actually barely lives right there. Batman down to one hit away from dying. Yeah, he's got to get out If Batman goes there. down, this could be another draw. <laughs> it would be another draw. As a matter of fact. We're down to a minute and 40. Batman has to get out of there, really. I think he's just... I don't know, maybe a little risky to send Batman Robin to the heavy area. Look oh, at that trap. Oh, Gaming actually trying to get that yeah, kill before exactly. the timer runs Exactly, because they're going they for the surrounding there. like maneuver, and I think really it's just kind of rash to send like Batman Robin to that central heavy area. Really, it's just they, they got no way out right now. Yeah. I know they like really are mobile and fast, but uh, they're going to really have to come up with something rather smart, because right now Insidious Gaming are, are playing this perfection. They're yeah. like spreading the net right now. They're spreading the net, so uh, there's no way out for, for Batman right now. We've got a minute, that's plenty of time for them to uh, just actually close in and finish him off right now. So, uh, yeah, he's got to be extremely, extremely careful. Yeah, they're actually really, really kind of surrounding yep. and going all over this abbey area. About a minute left remaining. Batman, I actually have no idea where he is. I don't know if he made it out. He probably did uh, just do, to, yeah, he actually made it to the to the western part of the city area. But they, really they're, they're still stuck, though, where they are. They're still stuck, but look at all those T69s. Look at the position on the T69s. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If, so if any just member of Insidious Gaming go for that uh, finishing blow on Batman, they would have gonna, to take so much damage. They're, they're uh, going to get so. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, this should 
should be, should be our, a PvP victory, but we're not there just yet. 30 seconds still left on the clock. Oh, this is nerve-breaking, as a matter of fact. Yeah, if Insidious Gamer are going to go for all-in, they gotta go right now. Yeah, exactly, and Nisa taking uh, a lot of hits. Little Mac here unleashing his auto-loader, and uh, he's already got two kills here. Oh, look at Nisa really trying to finish off Batman at this point. Yeah, they realize I mean, as they, long as they take down Batman. It's their only chance. It's their only chance. Oh, oh Batman goes do down do with 10 seconds remaining down. right exactly. now. Sichai goes down. Oh, oh. Sichai goes down as well. Like, uh, so <laughs> what a finish. This is really climatic, and I think that, uh, yeah, Grits here really, really going all in, but no, that's not gonna be enough. Oh boy, PP Super Friends with the victory Finally here. After four and look long at that, sets. all the happy faces. This has taken like four, no, three replays. So we played like on Abby four times uh, for this four set, and look at the joy on the PP faces and honestly it was close. Taste, they can taste the victory. Yeah, yeah, and uh, well obviously uh, uh, looks of disappointment and uh, yeah, lots of bitter faces on the Insidious side. They were so close, they almost pulled this off. Yeah, almost. Honestly, had they That would have been the heroic, really, I think. Quite an epic comeback, but yeah. yeah honestly, but had, for example, Insidious Gaming in the, in the maybe the first or second time we played on Abby, had they just gone for that bullying maneuver, had they just gone all in from the very get-go, just bully their way through those PP tanks, I think they could have probably just taken this. And then, you know what, I really like the way that Insidious Gaming spread out, as a matter of fact, and decided, like, the last time we played uh, on, uh, well, obviously on Abby, uh, I really did like how they did a, a 3 and 2, uh, both to the west and to the east, but as soon as they did that, you were like, okay, that's, like, so risky, especially those T-32s, and uh, this and is exactly what happened. Especially how close PP were to those two tanks over there. Exactly, the and more likely than not, obviously, PP uh, Super Friends were uh, just gonna go for that eastern front, because it does give them a wee bit more cover than to the west spread. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, quite unfortunately so for this guys he was trapped out there and as soon as that T32 went down then uh, ultimately it was all the advantage that uh, uh, PP needed to secure the set uh, but uh, yes I in any event uh, right now uh, let's talk about that finish so 10 seconds I into know, I know <laughs> it could have been potentially another replay but luckily for PvP they had all those T69s posted up and, and just ready to, to engage any member of Insidious Gaming trying to finish off that. You know what it was a great effort when he came to uh, when he came for our, uh, uh, Insidious Gaming but uh, all in all all in all I gotta say that uh, you know PvP Super Friends did so much uh, damage like uh, throughout the set like you know especially Robin like just sniping action as well it was pretty much spot on. Now as a reminder we do have of course uh, the special event going on uh, for this grand final. Yes, we're giving out gold. Yeah, free, uh, it's actually 500 gold for each individual account. So if you do play World of Tanks, uh, yeah, definitely go to that website. Definitely uh, redeem that code and get your free gold. Yeah, exactly. All you got to do is just actually go to that website. I do remind you of the address. That's World of Tanks. Uh, well, the tank, sorry, dot Asia, of course. Uh, the uh, bonus code is tam 7 Stream, and all you got to do is just go out there, pretty much, and get your gold. And uh, once again, last but not least, we do have a limit as to how much gold we can actually give out as well. So, uh, yeah, if you want to get your gold, just you might as well just go there right now. First come, first serve basis, folks. And now, well, that's a championship point. That's yeah, a yeah. championship point. The first point. championship point of today. PP leading 3-1 to one at this point. Honestly, it's going to be an extremely tall mountain for Insidious Game in the climb. For them to actually come back and become the victors right now, they have to win three straights that's now. Yeah, and on White Park, then Airfield, then Prokhorovka. Needless to say, that's a pretty yeah. tall order. But, uh, you know, if you ask me, once again, it's not game over yet. I mean, if Insidious Gaming somehow can can turn the tide and win this following this next set on White Park, yeah, yeah. Uh, then honestly, the pressure is going to be once again uh, on the uh, PP side because you know what like okay let's talk about PP right now three consecutive championship points that one set uh, pretty much can give them 60,000 US dollars and this title for uh, the, the the first regular season of uh, uh, the world of tanks in the Asia service so uh, yeah, a lot at stake and let us assume they just lose us uh, next set you know they, they are gonna still kick have in. two more sets to come back and I of mean course. if this does go to a seventh set though the tension is gonna be so incredibly high that I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a similar situation play out as we did on Abby because yeah. even Abby uh, the fourth set was extremely important because now it just awarded PP that match point. Well honestly even 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 before we started uh, the fourth set we both called this at the turning point uh, of yep, this yep. final pretty much and uh, so far it has been uh, of course it's not game over yet for Insidious they still have a chance a 
chance here to come back and I mean, turn this seen, around. We've seen the Sidious Gaming come back from, from uh, zero to two deficits before. So We've seen amazing comebacks yeah, from yeah, Sidious. I mean, I mean, but if, it's, if uh, any team's going to come back from this, it's in Sidious Gaming. Yes, indeed. But uh, once again, uh, considering the opposition today, it is, it is a tall mountain to yeah. climb. Uh, so uh, obviously the advantage now are going to the PvP side and uh, just uh, their sheer expression of joy, the explosion of joy after winning on, 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 on Abbey is telling them that they're really pumped up right now. In terms of momentum, they're really riding and on morale. it. Yes, uh, indeed. So, uh, anyways, can Insidious Gaming stay in this, or will PP uh, Super Friends be crowned champions? Let's find out as we go to White Park for set number five. So here we are, PvP Super Friends as the uh, yellow team, I do remind you, starting up to the north this time around, their opponents Insidious uh, Gaming as the blue team to the south. Yeah, so waiting about 10 seconds for the tank lineup, but yeah, PvP Super Friends, this is the first match point of today of the finals right here. If they take this, they will be our Season 1 champions. Do you think they can do, you think they can do it? Uh, it's too close to call once again. Uh, it's just like there's so much tension uh, right now. This is a grand final, and uh, yeah, this is an offline event as well. So, uh, and let us not forget, and see this game are really good on this map. Yeah, yeah, yeah most definitely so. So, honestly, yeah, early on, we just see both teams really kind of rushing that central uh, railway area. Yeah, possibly. I, I'm expecting kind of a mobile uh, defense, like yeah. uh, alongside the railroad, considering the opposition. But uh, yeah, it, obviously, Insidious Gaming is going to have to be very, very careful. Oh, but this. look at Insidious Gaming going with two Pershings of their own. Yeah, exactly. I was not expecting that. I actually. was not expecting that at all either. So two Pershings, two 110s, and an IS3. That's a very aggressive. Uh, They're going for a rush. Lineup. Yeah, they are. For a rush. Oh boy, this is brutal. Oh, They're, They're actually gonna go going in. in. They're going in, so Nisa here, the first one to come out of that uh, underpass uh, to the west and uh, yeah, facing off with Antare, but Nikolai taking a, a lot of hits here, he's down, one more shot would take care of him. As oh, well. Nikolai goes Nikolai down goes here. Nikolai goes down, this is not looking good from yeah, the get-go. if Insidious Gaming lose another tank here, then I have to say PP are going to be our oh, champions. Oh, and Nisa, look at Nisa, oh, Nisa oh, goes no. down, oh boy. It is now, uh, it's looking really grim for Insidious Gaming at this point, PP I really, super friends. Yeah. Most likely gonna take this. I think so too. I think so too. Cause yeah. uh, it's it's nearly mission impossible to come back from something like that. I mean, you know, Ace Ice Water is gonna go down yeah. here. Ice oh, Water he actually missed. Gonna... Elite missed that killing ball into Ace Water. Oh boy, this is really nothing's going their way today, is there? Yeah. So Robin, you're joining this fight. About to finish off Elite right now. Yeah. You know what? Robin doesn't even like care whether he goes down or not. He's just trying to finish off Elite at this and point. And another. And if he does. Oh down. boy, no. This is game over. Yeah. It is game over. This is game over. Yeah, and tear it down to 40 hit points, but it does not matter because, yeah, they just lost another tank in Sidious Gaming, down to only two tier A tanks remaining. PB, all of their tanks still up, oh except boy. of course those those T1 L and well, Ace the Water, yeah, Water Ice Water and another Ice yeah, yeah. right there. Ice Water goes down, but it's still not going to matter. I don't think so. I mean, unless <laughs> a miracle may happen, who on knows? The last tank on Insidious Gaming. Oh, and there you go. And already the celebration coming out from PP Super Friends, our Season 1 champions. Indeed, uh, our champions for the 2013 Tanks Asia Season 1 PvP Super Friends. Look at the, <laughs> the explosion of joy. You got Captain Batman with his mask on and uh, oh boy. Are they deserving champions or not, really? Yeah, most definitely so, and yeah, we have Insidious Gaming, of course, congrat congratulating our Season 1 champions, PvP Super Friends. Look at the joy on all of their faces. Exactly, and it's really, really nice. Uh, such a nice display of sportsmanship as well. We can see, like, this guy's right now with his raccoon <laughs> hat, yeah. uh, just congratulating his better opponents. I mean, let, let's face it, PvP played better today. All they did, all. they definitely did. I mean, th that first set did go in favor of Insidious Gaming, but that, I think that was just due to the fact that they were just playing a little bit too aggressive and just playing in the court of Insidious Gaming. But after the second they realized, you know, what Insidious Gaming were up to and, and what exactly they had to do to, to win these sets, they just executed that perfectly. Indeed, and uh, well, the, 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 
<laughs> I'm really liking uh, this kind of uh, image right now that we're seeing. Like, yeah, and the players. A lot of good sportsmanship. Exactly, exactly. I mean, like, you know, this is this is a game all together, and obviously there's a lot of money at stake as well, and uh, a lot of glory to be had. But uh, yes, uh, you can see this guy is here congratulating his teammates. Lots of disappointment, obviously, on the insidious uh, faces, but at the same time, they're still winners. Exactly, and we'll see them again for sure, for sure, for upcoming season two. In any case, right now it's time to move on, of course, to our award ceremony as well. But before we do, uh, let's talk about this performance today by PvP. Honestly, PvP could not have played any better. Although they were looking a little bit hesitant in that first set, the second they just got their firm ground and the second they got into the right mindset, it was just, just kind of a little bit smooth sailing from there on. Exactly, and what we saw on, uh, especially on Mines and on Himmelsdorf, was as we had said from the get-go, it's just the map control, really. I think uh, if the, the reason why PvP just came up on top out of all these teams like uh, in the Season 1 is their use of uh, number one T1s, mm -hmm. uh, their, their excellent scouting job, and the fact that uh, right now, in terms of individual skills, I, I think that you know teams like efficiency, they're teams all like the, Night Eagles, pretty much the yeah, same. exactly. Yeah. Like in terms of individual quality, like all these guys are experts when it comes to shooting, when it comes to this game. But really, what what uh, PvP Super Friends does best is play as a group, pretty yeah. much. Their teamwork, their coordination, and uh, their positioning is fantastic. Uh, really, it I mean, really is. They they really move as a single unit. They really much, pretty much know exactly what their teammates are going to do, exactly where they're going to be, and exactly where they want to focus. Exactly, and uh, we, we do have deserving champs. I, I gotta say, like, uh, you know, you actually, you know, I hate pronostics, right? But uh, before we had started, I just, I'm just like, you know, uh, <laughs> kind of praising myself a wee bit. <laughs> but Andy had asked me, and I was like, well, you know, if you ask me, I have a good feeling about PvP today because, uh, well, having uh, had a, a wee bit of a chat with the captain, like your Batman, uh, uh, the fact remains that, yes, they have been MIA for a while. But they did it purposely. But uh, not maybe like 200% purposely, yeah, yeah, yeah. but at the same time, they had so much time to, uh, you know, just check out the VODs and do the homework on the few, few teams out there that really just could uh, uh, pose a threat uh, to uh, their crown, and uh, they've done so extremely well. Now, of course, we're not there just yet. I mean, like, this is uh, the bliss of the moment, but uh, if there's one team that I think could even retain their crowns, probably them. Yeah, most. Well. I mean, I mean... Honestly, <laughs> it's a long in, journey, in, in, in the first half of the, op uh, of the first season, I really did not think any team could overcome PvP Super Friends. Yes, indeed. Uh, they have been most deserving champs. Our week three and our week of four champions, back-to-back -back champs, of course, PvP Super Friends, have just been crowned the 2013 Tanks Asia Season 1 champions. And of course, right now, we're going to go uh, and move on to our awarding ceremony. A big round of applause for our runners up Insidious Gaming. Yes, indeed, Insidious. Congratulations. All right, once again, uh, a word of congratulations, of course, uh, for our runner ups. A valiant effort that was, and uh, this guy's, yeah, so sorry about that loss, really. Must have been, like, quite heartbreaking, but. Uh... <laughs> All right. But, anyways, like, yeah, our Insidious captain, who actually has a wee bit of present for you, Batman. There you go. <laughs> once again, like, yeah. A wonderful performance by both teams again, and uh, Batman has promised you're actually wearing your mask right now. <laughs> <laughs> this 
is where all my power is here in the first place. <laughs> I have to actually have to ask you, do you play with the mask on at home? <laughs> I even have a Batman t-shirt on at home. Okay, you know what? Next final, you have to bring out the cape as well. <laughs> and of course, Robin has to bring out his costume as well. Once again, a wonderful performance uh, from both teams. We're going to hear from the runner-ups, of course, first. What a performance. Yeah. So, yeah, once again, congrats, guys. A great performance from the CS Gaming members. And I have to ask Desk, guys, the captain, how was it to play in this final stage? It was really tense and it's really nerve wracking, especially to think with last minute stress every now and then because PvP, you guys played really, really well. I mean, your adaptation of the map is just insane. Uh, congrats, Batman. Congrats to your team as well. But this is not the end. Season 2, we will be back and we will defeat you. So actually, you already answered my next question would be, what are your goals for next season? Defeat PvP! <laughs> Alright, so yeah, finally, any comments to your fans? <laughs> I just wanna thank the Singaporean guys for supporting me and anyone else on the forum, Warriors, to support me. Uh, as I say, keep on supporting us. We will be back. We will defeat PvP. We will defeat Batman. <laughs> Maybe you should change your name to Superman. <laughs> or uh, the Joker, the Joker. <laughs> the Panda. We're gonna change our name to Panda. All right, yeah, so once again, a big round of applause for our runner-ups, Insidious Gaming. All right, now, and now, of course, moving on uh, to our uh, newly crowned uh, champions, PvP Super Friends and their captain, Batman. Okay, man, come here. So your first impressions here. That was a really tough game, even it was a 4-1. There was a, that um, Abby, Abby length was really hard. Uh, I could have what, um, the T32 where that last shot, eh, we were really, we were really, what? We were really stressed, we were shouting at each other inside. But we know we love each other and that's what, that's what, bro <laughs> that, that's what brought us here on top. Well, actually, you know what? We saw that uh, we all saw how we had to play like four times on Abby, and I couldn't help but notice like some of your faces in the booth, and you were like, oh. <laughs> again. So, how how painful was it? It was so painful. We had a lot. We had a lot of chance. We got a lot of chance to win that. I think we because um, it is also our first time coming up here in the um, in this uh, in this final. We didn't even qualify for tank eight. Thank Asia Open season because I didn't even register for that. If I registered, maybe I was number one. You know? But my wife. <laughs> the humility of a champion. <laughs> now I understand why you're wearing that mask. Pretty much, you don't want anybody to recognize you, is it? Yeah, I know. I know that that was just a joke. Yeah. These guys are really good. Actually, you know, I just have a personal question for you. Did you really anticipate this win, or were you that confident you were gonna win like throughout the season? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. We, when we at the middle of the season, after winning our two straight our champ, our finals, we started just being very bad. We were shouting at each other. We were, we were really angry. I was angry at all of these guys. I was super frustrated, and then um, we we started grouping up, being stronger, and then we. We were able to qualify for third, and then we, we were able to beat efficiency with uh, all our focus. And we we came, came, came to beat ISG in a really hard time. Well, once again, congratulations. But I think that, you know, in all fairness, if there's one team that has shown the best teamwork out there, it's probably you guys. So once again, congrats. Our champions here, of course, PP Super Friends, uh, newly crowned champions for the 2013 Tax Asia Season 1. Congrats, man. Anyways, now, of course, it's going to be time to move on to the actual award ceremony. So I would like all of you to uh, welcome, of course, the general manager of Wargaming Asia, of course. So, uh, yes, once again, <laughs> our special guest here today, of course, we've got uh, Jasper Nicholas. Please come into the stage. And now, of course, for our 2013 runner-ups here, Insidious Gaming.
All right, and once again, uh, just uh, what a grand prize. 20,000, not too shabby if you ask me, though. But, uh, and now, of course, uh, for our great and deserving champions, the 2030 Tex Asia Season 1 champs, PVP Super Friends! <laughs> And what, what, once again, once again, hey, hold that trophy up, man. Like, where did all that energy go? Once again, Captain Batman and his troops here for our 2013 Tanks Asia Sin. <laughs> No doubt we'll be back, of course, a grand prize of $60,000 and, of course, a nice trophy to go along with that. And look at this man, the Masked Man, Captain Batman and his troops here. Once again, what a performance today. Uh, cheers, everyone. It's been a great uh, show so far. All right, now, well, folks, that's going to wrap it up uh, today, pretty much, uh, for our uh, Season 1. It's been a long journey, Andy, eh? I mean, it's been a great honor and pleasure to cast this first season of the, uh, the Asian League, and honestly, a little bit of me is going to be missing at least for uh, until we get to the second uh, the second season. And I just really, I, I just couldn't be happier with with the outcome today. Well, exactly, and uh, needless to say as well, I mean, the game has evolved quite a bit like throughout the season. Uh, yeah, just wargaming uh, once again coming up uh, with a wonderful format as well, where teams play against one another, get to know one another uh, better as well. So a uh, lot of sportsmanship today, and obviously, once again, a word of congratulations both to our runner-ups, Insidious Gaming, and of course, look at these champions, and their check right now, of course, BP Super Friends, our 2013 uh, Tanks Asia Season 1. Well, fear not, of course, we're going to be back uh, with with more taking action with our upcoming season two uh, that's gonna happen in a couple of weeks of course uh, and of course any and myself will be back to host this as well so stay tuned uh, for more world of tanks action as well that's gonna wrap it up for today friend to you i'm philippe joe and of course we'll see you very soon for season two <laughs>